One of the best businesses that you can start from home is a digital agency business. There are lots of small businesses that have had to close down with everything going on in the world at the moment. And one of the main reasons for this is because they aren't online. So you can start a digital agency that helps small businesses to get online, offering services such as web design, mobile app development, software setup such as Zoom, social media setup and e-commerce, among loads of other things. In today's full length tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can set up your very own digital agency from home, including templates that will allow you to create your own website for your digital agency, what type of services you can offer, how you can find clients and get them to book consultation calls with you, as well as email marketing for your digital agency, and then also how you can actually bill your clients to make sure that you get paid. And the best thing about starting a digital agency business from home is that you can actually set this whole business up for under $100. So without further ado, let's go and have a look at how we can actually start our very own digital agency business from home. The first thing that we need to do in order to get our digital agency up and running is actually go and build a website for our agency so that clients can go and book free consultation calls with us, go and have a look at the different services we offer. And also it just helps to build trust with your clients when we are sending out cold emails, which we will go over later on in the tutorial. It's good to actually have a website so that the clients can go and have a look and verify that we are a proper digital agency with a website. They can go and have a look at the services we offer, the prices and things like that. And then, like I said, they can go and actually book consultation calls through that website. And in order to actually build that website, we are going to have to go and purchase some hosting for the site so it actually can be online. Now, the most reliable hosting company that I always use for all of my websites is SiteGround, and there will be a link in the description below to SiteGround. So once you come over to SiteGround, you should see a page like this. Now you will have a few different packages over here. So we've got Startup, Grow Big and Go Geek. Now I recommend if you are just starting out, you can just go with the Startup. It only allows you to create one website, but that's all you're going to need to start your digital agency. And then maybe if you want to think about building more sites in the future, you can always upgrade to Grow Big. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go here and click on Get Plan on the Startup Plan. Now from here, we are going to have to register a domain name. Now this is going to be the name of your digital agency. To be honest with you, the name isn't gonna be that important. There are loads of different random digital agency names out there that have managed to be successful and the name hasn't actually been that great. As long as you're offering good services and you're going to reach a lot of clients through cold emails and calls and things like that, it doesn't really matter about the name. But if you are looking to actually go and pick a domain name, you can use a website called Lean Domain Search, I recommend, and this is the best website for coming up with name ideas because what you can actually do is you can just go and enter in a word so let's just go and say let's say chimp for example so we've got mailchimp but let's just say we want to call our agency something chimp like that so we can go and put that in and then you can go and sort it by length so you can go and find the shortest domain names with the word chimp in and then you can go and do ends with so we could go and have a look so we could go and do something like Fox Chimp Marketing, something like that. So like I said, you can just go and use this site to come up with a name. And like I said, the name isn't really that important. So just go and find something that's catchy and maybe that you like and find interesting yourself. So we go, we'll go back over to SiteGround here and I'm just gonna go and register a domain name. So you can go and choose what you want. I recommend choosing a .com domain name. So I'm just gonna go and type in my domain name now. Once you have typed in your domain name, just go and click on proceed. Once you click on proceed, you will be asked to enter in some account information. So firstly, you're gonna go and enter in your email and password. Once you enter in your email and password, you can just scroll down and then you are going to go and enter in some information about yourself. So your country, your city, your last name and your first name. Once you have entered that information in, you can just scroll down and then you're just going to go and enter in your payment information. So your card number, so that you can actually go and pay for the hosting. So once you've done that, just scroll down over here and you will see purchase information. So you will actually see you're gonna go and purchase hosting for 12 months and you can see that we've got the startup plan over here. Now, if we scroll down, we are going and adding some extra services. So we're adding our domain registration. I wouldn't worry about domain privacy for now. Basically what domain privacy means is no one can actually look up who purchased 
purchase the domain. But I, like I said, I wouldn't really worry about that too much for now because it's not an actual big problem. And then you've got SiteGround Site Scanner. So this just goes and monitors and checks that your site is always working and that nothing malicious has been done to the site or that you haven't been hacked or anything like that. Now, for now, like I said, you probably won't really need this either. So what you can do is you can just go and scroll down. You can just go and confirm and then you can just go and click on pay now. Once you click on pay now, you will see your account was successfully created. So what we can do now is click on proceed to customer area. Once you click on this, you will see create or migrate your website. And then it will say start using your hosting by creating or migrating your first site in just a few easy steps. So go and click on over here where it says set up site. You will then see a page like this that says start new website or migrate website. So we're going to go and click on start new website. So just click on select over here and then we're going to scroll down and we're going to go and select WordPress. So just go and select WordPress. And once you click on this, it will say set up login. So we're going to have to go and enter an email address and password. Now this email address is going to be the one that we use for our WordPress site. So for example, if we forget the password to our WordPress site login, then we're going to use this email address to reset it. So make sure it's an email address that you use regularly. And I recommend using the same email address that you signed up for SiteGround with just to not confuse things. So I'm just going to go and enter in an email address. And once you have entered in an email address, you are going to want to go and pick a password. Now, I recommend randomly generating a password because this is going to be the password that you use to log into your site. So if this gets hacked, it means people can go onto your site, they can change things, and they can go and do weird things to your site. So you're gonna want to make this really secure. So I recommend randomly generating. So SiteGround will randomly generate a password for you. And these ones are usually a lot stronger than anything that you could think of yourself. So just go and click on the generate button over here and once you click on the generate button just go and click on copy now once you have copied that password make sure you go and save it somewhere so I always go and save it in a word file so make sure you just go and save that password somewhere so you're just going to go and copy this and go and paste it into a word file and save it so that you have the password so this is going to be the password that you use to log in to your WordPress website so you can actually go and update it and do things like that so make sure that you save this password somewhere so once you have saved the password, just go and click on continue. Once you click on continue, SiteGround will ask you if you want to install SG Site Scanner or Domain Privacy onto your website. Now, like I said, we don't really need this at the moment. So just go and click on finish. It will then say creating your site. So just wait a few moments whilst WordPress installs onto your website. So once WordPress has finished installing, you will see you're all set. So what we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and click on manage sites over here. Once you click on manage site, it will be brought over to this dashboard over here. Now, the first thing that we are going to do is actually install an SSL certificate onto our site. Now, what this does, it gives this little padlock in the URL over here, and that basically tells our visitors that our site is safe. If you don't have an SSL certificate, people visiting our site will be told that the site is not safe. And obviously that's gonna put people off and make them think that we're some sort of shady company. So you're going to want to install an SSL. So in order to do this, we're gonna go and click on security over here. And then we're gonna go and click on SSL manager. Once the SSL manager loads, we will go over here where it says select SSL. And we're gonna go and click on let's encrypt wildcard. So we're gonna go and click on that and click on get. It will then say your request is being processed. So just leave it for a few minutes. It will then say let's encrypt is installed for your domain. So you will see your domain down here. And what you're going to do is over here where it says actions, you're going to go and click on this and then you're going to go and click on enforce HTTPS. So just go and click on this. And then after that, just go and click on that and you will see HTTPS enforce first for your domain. So now that we have done that, HTTPS means that our SSL certificate has been installed and we will get this little padlock come up in the URL, which means that visitors will know that our website is safe. So now we, that we have done this, we can actually go over to our WordPress dashboard and have a look at actually creating our site within WordPress. So just go and click on WordPress over here and just go and click on install and manage. And then when we scroll down over here, we will see our site over here because we've already installed WordPress. So from here, we are gonna go and click on this little arrow that says login to admin panel. So just go and click on this. 
and once you click on this it will bring you over to your WordPress dashboard and like I said over here we've got the little padlock so that our visitors know that our website is safe now from here we are going to go and create our site now I have gone and created a fully built theme for you so that you just have to go and install it and your site is completely set up for you so you don't have to go and build it from scratch so what we are going to do now is we're going to go and download that template and actually upload it to our WordPress website so that it's completely built for you. So in order to get the free digital agency template that I have built, just go over to foundergo.co slash download the template and I will leave a link in the description to this page as well. And then all you have to do over here is just go and enter in your name and then go and enter in your email address. And once you have entered that in, just click on, yes, I want my free copy. So just go and click on that. And once you go and click on that, you will be brought over to the thank you page. And over here, you will see the free digital agency template. So just go and click on download template. Once you click on download template, you will see the template downloading. So just give it a few moments to download. Once the template has downloaded, we can just go and close this and head back to our WordPress dashboard. And now what we're gonna do, we are going to go and upload that template so that your site is completely built for you and you get a head start with actually creating your digital agency. You don't have to spend weeks and days trying to build the site because it's already gonna be done for you. So in order to install that template, we're gonna go to plugins over here and click on add new. Once you click on this, you're gonna go over here where it says search plugins and type in all in one. You will then see all-in-one WP migration. So just go and click on install now. Once you click on this, just go and click on activate. Once the all-in-one WP migration plugin has been activated, you will see it over here and you will see also see it down here. So just go on this and click on import. Now over here, you will see the maximum file size is 128 MB. Well, the template that we're uploading is bigger than this. So we're gonna have to install another plugin so that we can go and upload files that are bigger than that. So what we're gonna do is we'll just click on over here where it says how to increase maximum upload size. So just go and click on this and then once you click on this, we're gonna scroll down. So scroll all the way down and it will say use plugin. So number four, so go and click on this. And then over here, we will see the basic free all-in-one WP migration import that allows us to import a template that's 512, up to 512 MB, which is the one that I have created. So just go and click on download on this and then you will see it download over here. Then we can just go and close this. Then let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. We will now go to plugins and add new again. And then from here, we're gonna go and click on upload plugin. So click on this, click on choose file. And then you will see the plugin that we just downloaded over here. So just choose this and click on open and click on install now. Once you click on install now, click on activate plugin. And now you will see all-in-one WP migration file extension. So once again, now we can go back to all-in-one WP migration and click on import. And now you will see maximum upload file size 512 MB. So now that we have done that, we can go import from, and we can go and click on file. So we'll be importing a site from a file. So let's just go and click on file. Now from here, we are going to look for our digital agency template that we downloaded from Foundergo. And we are going to go and right click this because this is a zip file currently. And we are going to go and click on extract here. So just wait for that to extract. And once it does extract, you will see satinlodge.com.wpress. So this is going to be the file that we upload. So go and click on this and then just go and click on open. So now it will be importing that site to your WordPress website. So just give it a few moments to actually go and upload that pre-built theme. Once the import process has finished, you will see this message over here just saying the import process will overwrite your website. So just go and click on proceed. You will then see this. So just give it a few moments to actually complete the import process. Once the import process has finally finished, you will see this message saying your site has been imported successfully. So just go and click on finish. So now that we have gone and clicked finish, we can actually just go and refresh our site. So let's just go and hit refresh over here. Once you hit refresh, you will be brought over to your WordPress admin dashboard again like this, and it will prompt you to log in back into your website. So what we are going to do is we're just gonna go and type in admin because that is going to be our new username. And we are just gonna go and reset our password. So go back over to your SiteGround site tools, go to WordPress, go to install and manage. And then over here, you will see your domain. So click on these three dots 
and click on update admin password. And then the one that we copied earlier and saved into a Word document, we are just going to go and paste that into here. So just go and paste that password in that we saved earlier, like I said, the one that you saved into a Word document and just go and hit confirm. So now we have updated our WordPress password. So we can go back to the WordPress dashboard where we need to log in. And like I said, our username will now be admin and we can just go and paste our password in and click on login. So now that we have logged in, you will see over here, it says digital agency. So if you go and click on this over here, and once we click on this, we will see that the home page loads. And this is how your digital agency site is going to look. And you can see I've put in a lot of effort to make sure that the branding looks really good and it looks really professional. Now I'm gonna go over this site and we will go and have a look at the different services that we offer and how people can go and booking consultation calls with you and all of different things like that. And also how you can amend anything. So obviously if you want to change the logo, if you wanna change any of the branding colors and things like that, just to make it a little bit more personal. Personally, I think you should just keep it the same so you can get your digital agency up and running as soon as possible so you don't have to faff around with changing things but obviously you're going to want to change some things like the get in touch details the numbers here and things like that so I'm going to show you how you can actually do that now also I'm just going to go and quickly show you something if you go and click on one of the other pages so for example if we go and click on the about page it should load or if we go and click on the packages page it should also load as well but if for whatever reason you are getting a 404 error from site ground so you click on it and it says 404 error page not found if you do get that go back to your wordpress admin dashboard over here and then what we are going to do is if you go down to settings over here and click on permalinks and then just make sure that your permalinks are set to post name over here so just go and click on that and then go and scroll all the way down to the bottom and click save changes and then once you do that when we go back to the front end of the website, we should be able to go and click on any of the pages and they should show up. Now it should work first time, but like I said, if you do receive that error message, then that is the reason why. So now that we have actually installed our theme, our digital agency is halfway there and ready to go. Now I'm gonna go and show you all of the different things with the site. So like I said, how you can go and change the branding colors, how you can go and change all of the info down here and a few other small things that you might want to change. And then once we have done that we will have a look at the booking consultation process so if people want to actually book in for a free consultation with you where you discuss through the services with them and what you can do for their business then I will go and discuss that process and show you how you can actually go and start getting clients and how they can book in with you so the first thing that you are going to do with your digital agency website is actually assign it to your email address because when you install the template it will be assigned to the email address that came with the template so in order to do this just go back to your WordPress dashboard and then from here we are going to scroll down to settings and over here you will see general so just go and click on this and then from here you will see administration email address and you'll see digital agency approval so just go in here and put in your email address so you're just going to go and type in your email address at outlook.com or wherever it is and then all you're going to do from here is just go and click save changes now when you go and click save changes you do have to go over to your emails then so go over to your emails and you will see this over here how the admin you're recently requested to have the administration email address on your site changed just go and click on the link and then you will be brought back over to this page and then where it says administration email address it will actually be your email address in there so that means that the website has now been assigned to your email address and you are the owner of the wordpress website so now that we have done that the next thing that we can do is go over to users over here and go to all users and then from here you will see this over here so once again you're going to see this admin so just go and click on edits over here and then from here, if we scroll down, once again, where it says email, you're going to go and put in your email address in there. You can also go and change your nickname. So that's the one that you log in with, but I recommend just leaving it as admin. That's totally fine. And then you can just scroll all the way to the bottom and just go and click on update profile. And that just means that your profile now is linked to your email address as well. So that means that your WordPress profile and your WordPress website are both now linked to your email address. So there won't be any problems in the future if you do forget your password or something like that, at least you can access it through your email address. So now that we have done that, let's go back to the front end of our website and let's start having a look 
at how we can actually go and change things on the site. So we're gonna start with looking at how we can actually go and change the logo, because that's probably going to be one of the first things that you want to change so that it matches with your domain name. So in order to change your logo, you can actually go and create a logo at a website called canva.com. And this is a free online tool that allows you to create graphics. So if I just go and log into my Canva account, and because I already have an account, I can just go and log in. But all you need to do is click sign up if you don't have a Canva account, it's pretty straightforward. You just put in your email and pick a password. So I'm just gonna go and click on login. And once you are logged in, you will see a page like this. So from here, we are going to go and create a design. So just click on custom dimensions over here. And we're gonna go for 265 by 90 pixels and just click on create new design. So once you click on that, you will see that you have your canvas over here and you can just go and create create a simple logo. So if you just go to text over here, we can go and click on add heading and then we can just go and type in something and make it easy. So let's just go and change the font. So let's just go and change it to, let's say, Montserrat. So we can go and change it to Montserrat like this. And then you can just go and create a simple logo. So I could just go and change this to, let's just call it agency. Let's just say, for example, and then we can go and change the font size so we can make it a bit bigger. So maybe that's a little bit too big. Let's go for 60, let's try 36, 42. So let's go for maybe a little bit more than that. Let's go for 45. So let's just go for that. And we can just drag this so that it's like that. And then all we need to do is just drag it so that it's in the center. So let's just do that. So now we have our logo over here and because it's got a white background, that's perfectly fine because our header is white as well for our actual menu on our site. I'm just gonna change this to 44, just make it a little bit smaller. So now we can, once again, if we go to the bottom over here, let's just go and delete this. And it can be a little bit fiddly Canva at times, but like I said, it's an easy way to create a quick logo. So let's just move this into the center again. So that's there, and there we go, perfectly in the center. So now what you're gonna do is just click on the download button over here. So let's just go and download that, and click on download. Once it has downloaded, we can just go and close this now. So let's just go and close Canva, because we don't need this anymore, and we can just go back over here. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and click on customize over here. Once the customized area loads, you will see header over here. So just click on header and then you will go and click on site identity and then you will see change logo. So we can just go and click on change logo and then we can go and click on select files over here. And then in my downloads, we've got this agency that we just downloaded from Canva. So just go and click on open and then we can just go click on select and then we can just go and click on skip cropping and now we should be able to see, so we're gonna change this one as well. So this is the Retina logo. So let's just go and change this as well. And just choose this, choose image. And now we can see we have our agency logo over here. So that's perfectly fine. And you can go and change the logo width. So if you wanna make it a little bit smaller, you can go and change it. So let's just go and make it like a nice round 120 like that. So now we have gone and changed our logo. So you can see that's really easy to do if you wanna go and change your logo nice and quickly now. But might wanna spend a little bit more time on your logo because you can see that looks pretty plain. So you might wanna create something that looks a little bit better within Canva, maybe spend a little bit more time on it. Or you can always go and pay somebody on Fiverr to actually create a logo for you. But as things go, that doesn't look completely out of place. It looks perfectly fine if it just matches with your domain as well. Now I'm just gonna go and change my logo back because I like the original one. So I'm just gonna go and change it back to this. And let's just skip the cropping. And I'm just gonna go and change this one back as well, just because like I said, I prefer this one. So let's just go and change that back to that. And now I'm just gonna go and change the size back to let's say 150. Okay, so now we can just go and hit publish. So now we can just go and close this. And that is an easy way for you to go and change your logo. So now that we've done that, the next thing that I wanna show you is how you can go and change things on the actual page. So you can go and move things around, you can go and change the colors and things like that. So if you wanna go and do this, once again, if we just scroll all the way to the top, if you wanna go and change the base colors of our site, so like this kind of bluey purpley color over here, if you wanna go and change that, once again, we will go into customize. Now once the customize area loads, once again, you can go into global over here, 
and over here you'll see all of these different areas. So you've got typography, colors, container, and buttons. So firstly, let's have a look at typography. So basically, this is going to be the font that's on your site. So the default font for your headings. So the headings are gonna be all of the larger kind of text, and then you've got the body, which is the smaller kind of text. So if we go to base typography, typography over here you can go and change it now like I said I have actually designed this to make it look good and professional so I wouldn't really worry too much about changing it but if for whatever reason you do want to change it then you can go and do that within here and also you can go and change all of the headings as well like I mentioned now if we go back we do have the colors over here so if we go to base colors you will see that we've got the base colors so we've got the text color which is gonna be all of this. We've got the theme color. So the theme color is gonna be basically this kind of purpley blue. So you can see all of the buttons have that on them and a lot of the different other areas have that on them. So you can go and change that. And then we have the link color. So the link color is when I hover over this, you can see it changes to that. So you can go and change the link color. And then you also have the heading color and all of those different types of things. So you can go and change these colors if you want to. Like I said, I still think it looks perfectly good the way it is, but if you do want to change it, just make sure you keep it consistent that you're not using loads of different colors because that's gonna make your site look unprofessional. So let's just go back over here and we'll go back again. And then finally, we have we do have container over here. So that just means how the site actually looks. I would leave this exactly how it is because it's just going to make it look a bit strange if you change anything with this. And then you've got buttons over here. So you can go and change the buttons as well. So you can see you can change the typography of the buttons. You can go and change the padding so they're not round like this. You want to make it a square button or something like that. You can go and change all of the things within here. So now that I've shown you that, we can actually go and close this customize area over here. So that is how you can use the customize area to change some of the main things on your site. Now you can also change each individual thing on your site as well. So I have used something called Elementor, which is a page builder that allows you to go and change things. So let's say we wanted to change some of the text on our homepage, we can go and click on edit with Elementor. So when you click on edit with Elementor, you will see this load over here. So this is the Elementor page builder. And like I said, this is where you can lo use loads of different elements. So you've got headings, videos, images. So you can always just go and drag things on if you want to. So if I just go and drag an image on here, so let's just do that again. So we should just see it go in there now. Just give it a moment. And once again, it can be a little bit fiddly at times. So let's just try and drag it in there again. So now you can see the image is in there and we can actually go and upload an image. So if I go choose image over here, I can go and upload an image from here. So I'm just gonna go and delete that because that's gonna look a little bit weird, just a random image there. But that is how you can use Elementor. You can just go and drag the elements to anywhere on the page. Like I said, if you wanna go and change the text, so let's say you didn't like this phrase, your gateway to digital growth, you can go and change this and go and use your own slogan. So you can go and just change it within here. You just click on it and that's it. So you can go and change anything on the site you will see that there's loads of different things like this. So basically all of these grayed out things are for mobile and for tablet. So this site is fully optimized for mobile and for tablet. And the reason why you see some of these grayed out ones is because they can only be seen on a tablet or on a mobile. So if we just go and change over here, you will see responsive mode. If we go and change this to mobile view, you will see now that some of the other areas grayed out. So if you click this button over here, hide panel, this will show you what it's actually going to look like. So you can see on a mobile, it looks really good as well. And like I said, there are some grayed out areas because some of them are only applicable to desktop and I've grayed them out so that they only show on a desktop so that it looks good on both a mobile and on a desktop. So that is how you can go and change things on a mobile as well. And you can also go into tablet mode and do the same thing if you want to. So let's just go back into desktop mode. And like I said, you can go and change pretty much anything you want. So let's say you wanted to change this picture here to some app that you might have created. You can just go and click on this and click choose image and you can just go and upload your image. Once again, you can go and change all of the text over here. You can change the buttons where they link to and all of those types of things. Now, like I said, I have created this so that you can get your digital agency off the ground as quickly as possible. So you don't really wanna go fiddling around with things, but let's say over here where it says meet the team, that type of thing, you're gonna to wanna to change to yourself. So over here, we've got meet the team. We can just go and click on this. Once again, you can go and choose image and then you can go and change your name. You can go and change your title. Now with this, maybe you're just working alone. So you can just go and delete 
this whole entire section if you wanted to if you don't want to have this on your site you will see this x over here and that will just delete the section so you can see when i hover on it it says delete section and that will just get rid of all of this so maybe you just don't want to have that on your site at all you can just go and delete it completely so you can do this with any single page you want to so you just have to go and click the update button now i'm not going to update this because i like the site how it is so once you've done that if you go over here to these three dots uh, these three lines sorry and you can just go and click on view page so once you hit update it should just bring you to it this one is just saying are you sure because i haven't clicked update to save the changes so i'm just going to go and click leave and now it brings me back to this page so let's just go and have a look at a few other pages how you can do that so for example if we go to the packages page once again we can go and change anything on here so we go to the packages page and we can just go and hit edit with Elementor again. And then when Elementor loads, we can go and change things. So let's say you wanted to change some of your package pricing. You think it's priced too low or you think it's priced too high maybe. You can just go and click on this. And then when you click on this, you will see header over here and you will see this is a pricing table. So you can go and click edit pricing table. And over here you will see price tag. So you can go and change this. Let's say I wanted to go and put my prices up. I could go and change this to $7.99 instead, so booking website $799 instead of $3.99. Now we'll go over pricing later on in the tutorial, but like I said, this is just a quick and easy way for you to actually go and change things. Now also you can duplicate things. So let's say you want to, to add another package and add a different service. You can just click on any of these. So you see this little gray thing here, this is one of the columns. So these are sections, these big ones over here these big blue ones and then within the sections you have different columns so you can see this one is split into three columns so if you wanted to duplicate something you can right click on a column and you can go and click duplicate and once you duplicate it now you can go and change everything within this pricing table to create a new package so let's say I wanted to create a new package I could go and call this one let's just say comprehensive package where we just offer everything as a one big package deal so I could go and change the price tag and I could go and say we will do everything for you for 1399 so that's the booking website the membership website and the zoom setup for all in one big package now obviously when you add up these prices it works out cheaper to just do them individually but i'm just giving you an example of what you can actually do and then you can just go into features and you can go and change all of the text and all of those types of things within here and you can go and change the button as well and all of those types of things so that's a really easy way that you can use elementor to actually go and change your site and if you want to delete anything once again you can just right click and you just hit delete and now you can see it just gets rid of it and go brings it back to three columns so that's a really easy way that you can go and update to your site and you can always go and add columns so you've got over here you can go and click plus if you want to go and add a two column so like this one over here is a two column section and then you've got a three column section which is this one over here or you can just do a one column section so if you just wanted to add a big picture or a big image, that would just be a one column section similar to this one, which is just a one column section. And then within there, I've just put a heading and some text and a button. So I've just dragged those in. So I'll just show you how you can do that. So let's just go and click on a one column section, let's just say. And then I can click on this grid icon over here and I could go and drag a heading in there and you can go and change it to center. And then I could go and drag a button in there so you can go and change it to center as well and that is how you can use the sections to go and add things to your site so let's just go and delete that and i'm just going to go and click view page again and i'm not going to save it because i just want to keep it how it is so that's how you can go and change all of your pages now at the bottom here we have this footer and you might want to change this number within the footer so to do that when you click on edit with elementor you will see footer over here so just click on footer and once we click on that we will see our footer come up and then over here we can go and click on this little pencil icon to edit the button and we can go and change the text so we can go and change this number so you might want to think about offering a mobile number that somebody can ring for you to go and do consultations or you can just go and delete this if you want to you don't have to have your number there so i could just right click and just delete this button and that's it now it's gone so it just has would you like to start your project with us so you can go and do that and then within the footer over here i would leave all of these pages the same as they are because they're all linked up to the pages on the site the terms of service the privacy policy but you can go and change the get in touch area now you don't have to go and put your address in if you don't feel comfortable putting your address so you'll see this over here and you can just go and delete it so we just click x it's gone so now we can just leave the number 
and we have the email address now once again you can just go and delete those as well so you could just delete those and leave it with an email address now I will show you how to set up a professional email address so I'll show you that in a moment within the tutorial so then you can go and change this to a professional email address but I just wanted to show you how you can actually go and just edit the footer as well so this is a really easy way and then over here you've got copyright at digital agency so you could go and change this to the name of your domain so copyright at blah 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 whatever the name of your digital agency is so then you can just go and hit update again and it will save so now we'll just go back and click on view page I'm just going to click leave just because I haven't saved it once again so now once we've done that when you actually come out of the footer it will just show the footer on its own so you'll think oh where's my page gone but don't worry about that we can just go and click back to our WordPress dashboard and then we'll just click back to our home page so now that I have shown you how you can go and edit all of the pages on your site, what we are going to do next is set up a professional email address. And the re reason we need a professional email address is because we want our clients to be able to contact us on this email address and we want it to look professional so we don't look like some dodgy company. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back over to Site Tools over here. So let's just go and click on this. And then from here, we're gonna go and click on Email. So go and click on Email and then we're gonna go and click on Accounts. So from accounts, what we are going to do is over here, it will say account name and then it will have your domain name. So you can go and call this whatever you want. I like to usually just call them contact. So contact at and then your domain name. And then you're gonna go and generate a password. So just click on generate. And then I'm just gonna go and copy this and go and save this like we've done before. So go and save this in a Word file or a notepad file along with your other passwords. So once you go and save the password, just click on create. So now you will see email account contact at your domain is created. So now that it has been created, down here you will see contact at your domain. And then over here you will say you've used zero megabytes out of 512 megabytes. So what we can do is we can click on these three dots over here and we can go and click, in, click on login to webmail. Once you click on that, you will be brought over here. So now this is going to be the email inbox for your professional email address. So now we have created our professional email address. We can just go and copy this and we can go and add that to our site. So let's firstly just go and add it down here. So we can go and add it to our footer. So once again, like I said, we can just go and click on Edit with Elementor, click on Footer. And once Elementor loads, you can just go to the email bit over here. So just click on this and where it has email, you can just go and paste that in. So just go and put in your professional email address in there. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna bother doing it for this one just because I'm not actually gonna be using this site. So let me just go and then click View Page and then just click leave. So now that we've gone and added it to the front end of our store, we want to actually go and add it to some of the back end areas of our website. So let's just go back to our WordPress dashboard. And within your WordPress dashboard over here, we're gonna to go to WooCommerce and we're gonna to go to settings. Now what WooCommerce is, that is the plugin that we're using to allow clients to go and book free consultation calls with us. So we're going to want to send them an email confirming that they have booked onto a free consultation call. So when you go to WooCommerce and settings, first you can go and put in the address of your website. So this is just gonna be your home address. So you can see here, I've just put in one, two, three, your address, your city, then you can put your post or zip code in, what country you're in, and that's it. And then when you scroll down, you will see currency now. Don't really, really worry too much about the currency. So let's say you're in the United States, you could go and change this to US dollar, but because we are only offering free consultation calls, we're never actually gonna be charging anyone through our site. So it doesn't really matter about what the currency is. So that's perfectly fine. So now that we've done that, now we're gonna go over to emails over here. So just click on emails. And when you click on emails, you will see this over here. So you've got new order, canceled order, failed order. Now, when somebody books a free consultation call, it will go to this email address here. So it's gonna come through as a new order, which is just gonna be a free order of a free consultation call. So whatever the address is here is where it's gonna come through. So if I was you, I would go and just manage everything through your free professional email address. So all emails regarding your digital agency website will come to your free professional email address that you created with SiteGround. So what you can do is you can go and change these if you want to. And then also when you scroll down over here, this is going to be what the client receives when they book their free consultation call. So where it says from name, you're going to want to go and put in the name of your digital agency. So for example, let's just say it was called something like London Agency. So, or London Marketing. So you'd go and put that in there. So when they book their free consultation call, they will receive an email and it's gonna say from London Marketing. This is to confirm your free consultation call. And then the from email address, you're going to go and put in your free 
professional email address that you've just created as well. So then it comes through from that email address. So that's gonna look like you are completely professional and you are actually a legitimate marketing agency. So now that you've done that, all you have to do is click on save changes. Now you can go and do this within settings as well. So when we go to general over here, once again, like I said earlier, you can go and change your administration email to the professional email address as well if you want to. So then you are just literally everything to do with your WordPress site will just go directly to this email address. It's totally up to you or you can leave it as an Outlook one just in case. So you've got two different email addresses that you're directing things to just in case you get locked out of one out, one of your email accounts or something like that. So you can go and change that if you want to. And then the last one is WP Forms over here. So if we go to WP Forms and All Forms, and then after that you will see Contact Forms. So you can go and click on Edit. And then when you click on this, you can go and click on Settings over here. And then within Settings, you've got Notifications over here. And then you will see that you've got Send to the Admin Email. So that's the one that I just showed you. But you can go and change this to your professional email address. So basically what this means is whenever somebody actually contacts you through the contact form, it will go to this email address over here. And then also you've got the from one as well. So you can go and change that. I'm just gonna go and close this and I'm just gonna exit because I'm not gonna save that, but I'll just show you where the contact form is as well. So you can go and change that within here. And then if we go to the front end of our website, and then from here, if we go to the contact page, so because we changed that to our professional email address, whenever somebody contacts us through this form over here, it will come through to our professional email address. Now, like I said, you probably want to just go and change all of those that I just showed you to your professional email address, and then that way, everything will be directed to this one email account, and then you can completely run your digital agency through this email account. So now that we've gone and set that up, and I've shown you how you can actually go and make sure all emails are directed to that account, what we are going to go and do next is just have a look at the site, everything we're offering on the site, and basically how our digital agency site works. And then after that, we'll go and have a look at the different services that we're offering, and then at ways that you can go and add services if you want to. So let's go and have a look at the website and the different things that we are offering on the site and the different pages that we have. But just bear in mind that most of our clients, we're gonna be trying to get them to go directly from the emails that we send out right over to booking a free consultation call. So they may, they may never actually interact too much with our website, but it is good to have one because they might go and check us out just to go and see the things that we're offering and if we are a legitimate agency. So initially you will just see this, taking your business online. We specialize in helping businesses to get online. Now that's the whole point of setting this digital agency up so that you can help businesses that were offline and don't have any online presence and you can get them online and up and running again so they can start making some money. So once you go and see this, you can just go and click on more info and it will bring them down to web design and development. So I'm just gonna go through the home page first. So you can see we're offering web design and development. They can click learn more to go to that specific page. So we'll go and have a look at that in a moment. But you can just see, I've just put some information in here that we design beautiful websites that are engaging for your customers, etc. Just a little bit of information. And when they click on learn more, they can go and find out a bit more about what type of websites that we actually create. Then we also have mobile development services. So we can go and create mobile apps for our clients so that they can go and get their business online again. And once again, they can click learn more to go over to that page. And then we also have the Zoom set up. So we're going to mostly look for clients who, like I said, were previously offline and now they're trying to get online. And one of the main things that they're gonna to have to use is gonna be Zoom. So let's say they were a dance instructor and originally they were just running a dance class in person. Well, now they can go and run a dance class online and they can use Zoom and a booking app or a booking website. So a combination of these things to get their business back online and actually start getting customers. And that can be for many different types of businesses or let's say that they were a restaurant and they don't offer delivery services. So they can go and be set up with a mobile app service that gives them the chance for their customers to actually go and order through their app. And instead of going and paying fees with Uber and with Deliveroo, they can have their own built-in mobile apps or a restaurant where they can go and have customers book in, sorry, not book in, go and order something from their menu through their delivery app, and then they can go and deliver that to their customer. So these are the different services that we're gonna be offering. And like I said, Zoom's gonna be a really important one because there are so many different people that you could target. You could target fitness coaches and things like that, but we will go through that later on in the tutorial. And then I've just put in this bit here, other services, so you can go and offer your clients things like social media. You can set them on e-commerce if they're just a small shop who doesn't have an online store. So you could go and set them up with that. We've got help and support. So like I said, we've just got 
we provide one-to-one -one sessions. So when you actually set them up with an app or with a website or with Zoom, then you're gonna have to give them a one-to-one -one session to actually show them how to use the tools that you've set them up with. And then down here, I've just put design development marketing. So these are pretty basic. They come with all of the different packages, but they're just some extra things to fill it out. And then we also have the portfolio. Now for the portfolio, I have just used some demo sites so that we can go and show clients some types of sites that we can create. So for example, this personal trainer one over here, if they click on view site, they will just go and see this personal trainer demo site. Now, obviously, if you're somebody who's a customer and doesn't have an online presence, they don't really know too much about going online. So when they see this site, they're just gonna think it looks really good. And these sites are really pretty easy to build. So we'll go through that in a bit more detail in the tutorial about how you can actually go and create things for your clients. But when your clients see this, they're gonna be really impressed with it. And then they're gonna kind of, that might sway them to wanting to actually use your services so like i said within the portfolio we have got a few different ones over here so we've got this one which is an accountant i think so if we just open this up so you could go and target accountants who maybe aren't online or maybe they are online but their site is just not very good and people can't actually go and book through their site and things like that so here's a few of the things that i just added so we'll just go and close these from the portfolio and then we've got what clients say so i've just put in here and you might want to go and change it so where it says digital agency anywhere where it says that. So just go and have a look on the site. You're going to want to go and change that to the name of your digital agency. So like I said, you might change it to London Agency or whatever it is. So digital agency helped me to get my business up and running and online. I run a dance class and a digital agency set me up with a booking site to allow my customers to book in for classes. They set me up with Zoom so I can run my dance classes from home and also a membership site. So this is one thing we're gonna be covering as well, membership sites so that my students can pay a monthly fee to watch the dance lessons back. So we can set people up where they can actually record their lessons and then go and add that to a membership site so their customers can pay them to have a look at it. Then we've got meet the team. Like I said, you can get rid of this if you want to. So you can just go and delete that. And then finally, would you like to start a project? and then they can just call you. Now you can go and change this if you want to. So that's the home page. And like I said, these are all the different services we're offering. Now, when you do click on the services, it will bring them over to the dedicated page. So you can see services over here. We've got web development, mobile app development, and Zoom setup. So what they can do is, if they go to web design and development and click on learn more, and then when they click on that, they will be brought over to the web design and development page. And then you will see over here, I've put some information about the different types of sites that we actually offer. So we've got booking websites. So one of the biggest advantages to online platforms is that they were always open for business. So we're kind of giving our clients the reason as to why they need a booking website. Booking systems help you do more with less. Once you have the business set up on the platform, you won't have to call your customers for reminders, send follow-up emails, or manually update your diary. So we're telling them how easy it is to go and run their business by having a booking website. And like I said, when we actually look at getting clients, we will look at the types of clients that this is applicable to, but this is mostly gonna be applicable to anybody that does any type of consultations, any type of coaching, any classes, anything like that. So like I said, fitness coaches, people that do guitar lessons, dance lessons, anyone that does consultations, so somebody like a psychiatrist or anything like that will need a booking website. And then we also have membership websites. Now this is gonna be more likely towards people, like I said, fitness coaches, they can go and do a membership website. And the reason why their customers would want to go and actually pay a monthly fee for their membership website is because if you've been working with a fitness coach in the actual gym for the last few months and you've got used to their style, people like familiarity. So they're not gonna go and just find a random online coach when they could go and carry on with the coach that they've been working with, but just carry on with them online. So you could go and find a client who is a gym instructor or a fitness coach, and they usually work with their clients face-to-face -face in the actual gym. But then you can say to them, look, we can get you set up with a membership site. You can go and record different exercise routines. And then you can say to your current client base, look, I've set up this membership site with loads of different exercise routines that we have worked through together. And then you can just pay me a subsidized fee. So let's say they usually pay them $40 an hour. They could just say, look, you pay me $30 a month and you can go on my membership site and look at all of it. And their customers are gonna to want to do that because like I said, they've been working with this fitness coach. So they're going to want to continue to work with the fitness coach that they know because they're more familiar with them than working with some random other online fitness coach. Now on this page, you can see over here that I've got view demo site and also view demo sites again. So I've just gone and linked to two demo sites, so one booking website. So when you click on view demo site, 
it will bring the client over to this page so they can go and have a look at how a booking website works. So this one is a yoga booking website. So if they're a yoga instructor, even better because it's gonna be really relevant to them. But like I said, it doesn't really matter. They can just go and have a look at how the booking website actually works. So let's say they were a, a guitar teacher, guitar lesson teacher, <laughs> or sorry, they teach guitar lessons, a guitar instructor. They can go and have a look. Okay, how would this work for my guitar business? Somebody wants to book an appointment and then down here it would say guitar lesson one or guitar lesson for beginners they can go and pick the trainer so maybe there's a multiple different people within their business who teach guitar so then they could go and pick the one that they usually work with click on continue so let's go and pick training so it could be different types guitar inter intermediate guitar beginner guitar expert whatever it is location is obviously going to be online so over here when we actually go and look at building the sites we would put this just as zoom so they can go and pick the zoom and then you can actually when you have consultation calls with your clients you can run through with this with them like how i'm doing it with you now you can say look i've seen your guitar business i think i can get it online this is the demo site and this is the things that we can offer you so then you can just go and click continue and then they pick the day that they want to have their guitar lesson so the 10th of april the time so let's just go and pick a time click continue and like i said i've just put this demo site in here so that clients can go and have a look at the different things that we actually offer as an agency and then you've got the cost so they can go and pay for their guitar lesson or for their yoga lesson or whatever it is and you just click confirm once they put in their name and their email address and everything so that is the demo site for the booking website that you can offer your clients and the main aim of our website is to try and get clients booked on to a free consultation call so that we can try and convince them to use our services and why they need a booking website or a membership site or zoom setup so you can see once they've looked at the demo site they can go to book consultation call and then once they click on that the potential client will be brought over to this page that says book your free consultation call fill in the form below and we will be in contact to discuss your project and then all the client has to do is just go and fill in their name their company name the country which is most likely going to be the country that you're in because those are the clients that you're going to be contacting their address of their business their phone number and their email address so this is going to be the most important one their phone number because then you're going to call them up and say look we're going to get you onto a consultation call you can even do skype calls with them so you can go and share the screen with them and things like that now i will go into that in a bit more detail later on and then all they have to do is click on place order and because it's free they will just go and be booked onto a free consultation call now we'll go and show you how you can have a look at all of the calls that have been booked in so they don't actually book a time slot with you they just go and book them in and then you go and contact them so that's why i've just put in here we'll be in contact to discuss your product because you're going to contact them so once they go and click on that they will be like i said brought over to this page and then they can book their free consultation call so let's just go back now also on this web design and development page we have membership websites and once again i have put a demo site in there for clients to go and look at and for you to go and look at as well at the type of sites that you can build for your client in terms of membership sites so let's just go and click on view demo site and from here you will see this type of membership site where it has different courses so like i said if you're a fitness coach you might have a few different classes that you want to offer or sorry like membership courses that you want to offer so you might have something like hit class morning hit class yoga class or spin class or something like that all of which can be done from home or, or online so then their clients can go and actually just pay for those courses and pay or pay monthly to get access to all of the videos from their fitness coach so this is just going to be a demo site so you can just go and th go through this now like i said i will be showing you some resources of how you can actually go and build these they're really not that difficult so if you're getting a little bit overwhelmed and thinking i don't know if i can start this digital agency because i've got no clue how i can set up a booking website or a membership site i'm going to show you some things how you can set them up really easily and then all you have to do is just practice building them once once you've built them once then you will have the confidence to actually go and build them for your clients as well so this is the web design and development page and like i said i've built all of these pages with the aim of trying to get clients to go and book that consultation call once you've got them booked on then it's down to you to try and convince them that your services are actually worth paying for and but like i said you once you get people booked in eventually you will start to go and actually get clients who will be willing to pay and work with you so let's just go back to the home page now so now from the home page again we've got web design and development which we've gone over now we have mobile app services so a client might come over to your website and they can just go and click on learn more for mobile app development services 
and then over here we will see the restaurant delivery apps now like I said this is going to be a big one for a lot of clients that you might work with because a lot of restaurants have had to close down and they're just not doing any business at the moment so they're not making any money so if they can find a way to actually go and start delivering takeaway then they can start making some money and this is how you're going to convince clients who are restaurants to actually go and work with you because you're going to say to them we can set you up with a delivery app and then you can actually start making cash again and then I've just put here why use third-party delivery apps like Uber and Deliveroo and pay huge fees because a lot of restaurants they're using Uber they're using Deliveroo but or they're using other ones um, I don't know what they're called Postmates or something like that and they're actually having to pay massive fees to these apps to be on there to work with them and actually be able to deliver takeaways whereas if they have their own delivery takeaway then they can keep all of that cash for themselves so this is a really good prospect for restaurants and like I said you, you just come over to here and then as a client they can go and read through this and they can think to themselves actually yeah why am I paying huge fees to uber and delivery and then once again you've got book your free consultation call and then they will be brought over to that same page so you can see once again if I'm a restaurant over owner I brought over to this page to book my free consultation call so that's me showing my interest in the services of the digital agency so now that we've had a look at that let's just go back and then if we scroll down we also have booking apps now these are basically the same as booking websites but the only difference between a booking app and a booking site a booking app is a little bit quicker so this might be more relevant to people like hairstylists and barbers and things like that so if you're a barber you can actually think about becoming a mobile barber so you could go as a digital agency go and contact loads of barbers and say right your barber shops are closed right now we can come and set you up as a mobile barber we'll set you up with a booking app and then all people do they just book in on the app they put their address in and then the barber goes to their house and cuts their hair and that's a really good way for them to go and get their business online again and actually start making some money now those types of business obviously can't be 100% online because they have to actually see the client to cut their hair and that's why they're probably better just having a booking app they don't need everything else all they need is just a booking app so this might be more relevant like I said to hairstylists and those types of things but you could also go and think about maybe offering this to fitness coaches and things like that maybe if they don't want a booking website they can go for a booking app instead maybe they think that mobile is better and more of their clients are more likely to use mobile and book on a mobile than book on an actual website so you can go and think about offering those different types of things to your clients and then finally if we just go back to the home page and then if we scroll down let's just go and have a look at the zoom setup which is pretty obvious it's not nothing it's nothing too strenuous or in-depth you're just setting up zoom for them so if we just go and click on learn more and then on this page it will just say run your business via zoom so zoom allows you to conduct one-to-one -one and group video chats online for free so I've just put free in bold so that the client thinks wow I can actually go and set my business up online for free and I only just have to pay for the setup and that's it so if you're running a class a consulting business coaching business so these are all the types of businesses that you could go and target as clients from your agency uh, or any type of business where you're required to communicate with your customers regularly then zoom is a must so this is a really easy service you can go and set up for them and it won't take you too long you just set them up with zoom now the reason that we're offering this as a service is because a lot of businesses small businesses that are not online most of the people running those businesses are actually quite scared of technology and that's why they haven't brought their business online sooner so even setting up something like zoom will seem like a daunting task for them so they'd be happy to pay $150 just to have it set up for them and for you to go and do some training with them on it instead of them having to try and figure it out for themselves and spending weeks and weeks and wasting time whilst their business isn't online whereas if they can just pay you $150 you set up for them and then give them a one-to-one -one call and they can have their business set up with Zoom in a couple of days. So once again, down here, we've got book the free consultation call to try and get them to book that call. And then, like I said, it's down to you to convince them of those services. So those are all the different services that we are offering. And like I said, I'm going to go through how you can actually go and do all of these things. So if you feel it's a bit of a daunting task right now to actually go and offer these services to clients, don't worry, because building booking sites and membership sites are really simple and building apps like rest restaurant delivery apps and booking apps are really simple as well so I'm going to actually show you how to do that and setting up zoom for your clients as well is really simple so don't worry even if you have a the tiniest little bit of knowledge of using technology then you'll be fine so then also we have this packages page over here so this is just so that our clients can see how much our actual prices are for each of these things now you can go and change these prices and offer whatever you want so I've just gone on here and I've just put some pricing that I think will help you get your business your digital agency business to close clients as soon as possible because we're not charging too much uh, but we're not kind of undercutting ourselves as well 
And then also from the client's point of view, if they think, wow, I can actually just get my business up and running again and I only have to pay $400, seems like a good deal. And like I said, for 150 just to get Zoom set up, seems like a good deal to them. They can go and get their business up and running and they don't have to pay a massive amount of money. But like I said, you can go and charge whatever you like if you want to. So over here, we've got booking sites, 399 because they're a little bit easier to set up than a membership site. Membership site, 499 and then Zoom set up 150 because this is a really quite a simple task. And then in terms of apps, they're both gonna be $500 because apps are a little bit more difficult to create, but I'm gonna show you how you can do them. So you don't have to worry about doing any coding or anything like that. You can actually just use a drag and drop piece of software to go and build these apps for your clients and they will never know any different. And then all of these ones over here, we've just got this start project barn. And once again, I'm probably sure you've guessed by now, as soon as they click on that, it brings them over to book a free consultation call. So we're not actually trying to sell anything to our clients right away. We just wanna get them onto that consultation call. And then, like I said, once they're on that call, they've shown their interest. And then we can actually, when, once we actually speak to them, it's a better way of trying to convince them that our services are worth it for their business. So we'll just go back once again. And you will see on this site, there's nowhere that, where they can actually go and pay and just buy our services. And like I said, the main reason for that is because we're not trying to sell to these clients right away because generally they're gonna get put off with that type of thing. So the main aim is to get them booked onto a call. Then we can ring them up. We can say, these are the services that we're offering. This is how we can get your business back up online and running again and helping you make some more cash and then this is how much we're charging and then i guess it's down to them whether they want to actually pay for it but generally a lot of them are going to think well this is actually a good idea to get my business even with everything going on with the pandemic and lockdown once everything is done and where they come out of that it's still going to be a good idea for them to still be online so you can also go and discuss that with them so let's just go back to our home page now just so we can go and have a look at a few other things. So like I said, all of these package buttons, they're just there and they just bring the client over to book a free consultation call. And finally, we've got this request quote button. So when they click on that, it brings them over to book a free consultation call. So you can see once again, it brings them over to the form where they fill in their details and just place their order for their free consultation call. So let's just go back now to our homepage. So now that we have had a look at all of the services that we're offering and just how the site works in general and what the aim of the site is, which is to get people booked onto those consultation calls, let's have a look at next at all of the different services that we are offering in more detail and how you can actually go and do those. So like I said, don't be too overwhelmed thinking that creating booking websites and membership websites is really difficult. Creating the restaurant delivery apps is really difficult. Setting up Zoom. I'm going to give you lots of resources and I'm actually going to show you in terms of the apps how to actually go and do this and set this up for your clients. So let's go and have a look at that next. So in terms of the web design side of things, this is actually a fairly simple service that you can offer to your clients. So like I said, don't be overwhelmed because it's fairly easy to make these booking websites and these membership sites for your clients. All you have to do is set up in a similar manner that you have set this website up. You have to purchase them some hosting. And like I said, I recommend using SiteGround for your clients as well because they're really reliable. And when you are purchasing them hosting, you can just use your client's email address to actually go and register the account. And you can just let your client know you're gonna receive some email from a company called SiteGround that I'm using to set your website up. And if it, they ask you to confirm anything, you can just call up your client and say, can you just click on the confirmation email? Now, in terms of creating booking websites, these are really easy to actually create. And I will leave a link in the description to this tutorial from a YouTuber called Daryl Wilson, who makes a lot of YouTube videos on WordPress. And I've learned a massive amount of things from him in terms of actually creating websites with WordPress. And he has created this full tutorial, how to make a booking website with WordPress. You can see it's one hour long so you can just go and actually create one just to practice and just to give you confidence that you know how to create these sites when you are actually going to go and create them for your clients and like I said it's an hour long so it's not a massive tutorial and that's because creating these booking websites isn't really difficult so you can probably go and do it in a couple of hours so watch this one hour tutorial so that you can get to grips with how to actually do it and you are going to be using an external plugin so you're going to be using this plugin let me just go over to it it's called Amelia so let's just go over here. And this Amelia is the booking plugin that you will use to create the booking sites. So if I go and click on buy Amelia, and over here you will see that it is $59 for one site. So like I said, you're gonna have to purchase some hosting for your clients and you're gonna have to purchase this if they want a booking site. So you're gonna take that out of the fee that you charge. So let's say you're charging $500, then you're gonna take this $59 out. Now eventually, once you start building up your digital agency, 
you can go and buy a lifetime license for unlimited sites and that way you can just create unlimited amounts unlimited amounts of booking sites for all of your clients and you don't have to keep buying the plugin over and over again but like i said when you're starting out you probably want to just go and purchase it individually for each individual client now don't worry if you don't have money to start because you can actually go and say to your clients right we want you to pay half up front so let's say you're charging 500 dollars for a booking site you can say we want 250 up front and then that will cover the costs of the hosting of the booking plugging and things Things like that so like I said I will leave a link in the description below to this tutorial from Daryl Wilson on how to make a booking website and I have massive amount of confidence in this tutorial and in Daryl Wilson's teaching style very similar to mine he goes through everything step by step and like I said I use him to learn a lot of different things about WordPress so if I didn't have confidence in his tutorials I wouldn't recommend it to you I'd go and create my own tutorial on it but like I said because he's covered everything pretty comprehensively this will give you confidence to be able to actually create these sites for your own clients now the next part is creating the membership sites which are a little bit more difficult because there's a little bit more that goes into it in terms of setting up and talking to your clients about how they can actually go and put their content on there so if it's going to be video content so if they're and fitness instructor or something like that and they want to go and put fitness videos on their membership site then you're going to have to go and talk them through that process and it's a little bit more legwork to actually set up but once again Daryl Wilson has created a tutorial on how to make a membership website with WordPress so once again this is a really good comprehensive tutorial just over an hour and this will teach you everything you need to know about creating a membership site for your client so you might want to go through this tutorial again like I said just to gain confidence just so you know that you have the confidence to actually create these sites for your clients before you start reaching out to people saying that you want to build a membership site for them when you've never actually done it before or even had a look at the tutorial and once again for this one we will be just be using a plugin so I just go and click on this and you can see that this plugin is $29. So similar to the booking plugin, you will just go and take this out of the fee that you charge your customers or your clients. So let's say you charge your client $600, you're gonna take that $29 fee out of the $600. So it's not gonna be full profit, so you're gonna to have to account for some of those expenses. So like I said, I'll leave a link in the description to this one again, and like I said, I have full confidence that this will teach you everything you need to know about creating a membership website. Otherwise, I would have gone and just created the tutorials myself, but these are really good, really in-depth. Now, the final one I'm gonna show you is going to be Zoom. So Zoom is fairly easy. You could probably figure out how to set this up just from trial and error and a bit of practice. But once again, there's another tutorial from another popular YouTuber called Ferdy Korpershoek. And he makes a lot of tutorials on WordPress and digital media and things like that, and digital marketing, sorry. And I watch a lot of his videos and have learned a lot of things from him as well. So I can definitely recommend his tutorials. And he has created this Zoom tutorial, so how to set up Zoom from scratch for beginners. And you can just go and follow this along and do it for your clients. So so like I said, when he's showing you how to set up Zoom and putting in the email address, you can just go and put in your client's email address and then just let your client know you're gonna receive an email from Zoom. If you need them to confirm anything, then you just call them and say, listen, you've got an email from Zoom. Can you just click on the confirmation email for us? And then the rest of it is pretty straightforward in terms of setting up. And this is just a 20 minute tutorial. So you might wanna look through this, go on it, make some notes, maybe go and practice doing it yourself with your own email address and just setting up Zoom. And like I said, it's, it's fairly easy. So you're not gonna be charging a massive amount of money to go and sell up Zoom. Like I said, probably about $150 seems fairly reasonable for people that have never used it and aren't very comfortable with technology, then that's a fair fee to go and set it up. But like I said, Ferdy makes a lot of good comprehensive tutorials, the same as Daryl Wilson. So I will leave a link in the description to this. So that leaves us with the final part of the different services that I'm showing you that you can offer to small businesses to get them online, which is mobile app development. And this is probably the most difficult part, but it's not difficult. It's just the most difficult service that you can offer. But like I said, it's not gonna be really hard. It's something that we're gonna use is a drag and drop piece of software to go and create these apps. So I am gonna go and show you how you can go and create the restaurant delivery apps and the booking apps now as well for your clients. And then you might wanna go and practice that, like I said, just so you have confidence that you can offer this service to your clients. So the tool that you will be using to build the mobile apps for your clients is called App 
Institute and this is a really great piece of software because it allows you to actually just drag and drop apps based off of templates so you don't have to do any coding and then you can just go and change things like the colors and the logos so it's really simple to go and create apps for your clients so you can see here we've got the restaurant takeaway app so you can go and use this template here and then you can just go and change it like I said to so change the logo change the colors and change the menu and I will be showing you how to do that within the tutorial now in terms of pricing if we just go over to the pricing here you can see in US dollars it's $95 a month for the actual client now we'll be going through how you can go and make the client pay for this without you having to pay for it and then get them to go and pay you so you just get them to sign up for it once you've actually built the app so that they pay directly and you don't have to worry about the recurring payments coming out of your account and then trying to get the money off of the client and you can see if they just pay for one year up front it is $66 a month so you can say to them you can either go and pay monthly and see how it goes and then you can cancel your app if it's not working well for you or you can just go and pay one year up front and I've worked out 95 US dollars so that's about 1140 US dollars for the entire app for the year and then if we go for 66 dollars if they just pay for the whole year up front that's going to be 792 dollars so within the packages here you might want to go and change this because I just created this kind of on the fly but in terms of the actual packages here they're going to be a little, more, little bit more pricey so both of the apps are going to be from $792 a year if they pay up front or up until let's have a look again up until 1140 if they pay monthly so you can go and put that in your packages and then you can just go and charge a setup fee so let's say they go for the monthly one it's going to be $1140 for the year and then you can charge 200 or $300 for the setup fee so that'd be 1440 or you can just round it up 1449 or something like that now you might think well that's quite expensive would a restaurant want to actually pay almost one and a half thousand dollars for a food delivery app well in terms of what they're using at the moment so if we just go and have a look over here they do have on app institute this actual calculator and this is based off of just eat which is another one that's similar to delivery uber eats and all of those ones i don't know if they have this in the us but they definitely have this in the uk so you can go and have a look at this calculator and you can use this to go and talk to your customers because you can see here if they make 1000 pounds a month in revenue they are losing 165 pounds by using these types of apps so if we do 165 pounds times 12 so i've just converted that into us dollars which is about 205 US dollars sorry actually let's just do that again 165 great British pounds to US dollars yeah 205 so you can see here that's around 2400 so 2500 dollars that they're going to be losing out on and that's only if they're turning over 1000 pounds a month in revenue so they're going to be losing out on two and a half grand a year and the app's going to cost them one and a half grand a year so they end up actually making more profit by investing in their own app and also a lot of restaurants are going to be making more than this so let's just say on average they probably make two grand something like that so they're going to be losing out on 330 pounds a year so that's probably around 450 dollars every single month so for them it is a good investment and then, like i said when you actually get them on the free consultation calls you can go through this with them and as well another thing is in terms of charging them the setup fee which like i said would be around two to three hundred dollars well if they hire an expert from app institute themselves so you can see here it's got hire a pro who will actually go and make the app for them it says down here starts from 349 pounds so once again if we just convert this into dollars great british pounds to dollars that's going to be $434 just and that's just the starting price so generally it's going to be a, a bit higher than that depending on what they want so you could just go and charge them let's say $300 to actually set up their app for them and then that way they don't have to pay an expensive or more expensive de developer should I say from App Institute themselves they can actually just go and pay us as a digital agency to do it and also one last thing that I just want to mention over here I found this article I don't know how accurate it is but I think it's fairly accurate it says Uber Eats charges restaurants a one-time free fee between 350 dollars and 500 dollars to actually just go and be on their platform and then 30 percent for every order so like i said when you are going to go and sell this to them and you say for a whole year even if they pay monthly it's going to cost you almost one and a half thousand dollars then you can go and explain to them that why this is a good investment for them in terms of it's costing them more to be on the platform such as Uber Eats, Just Eat, Deliveroo. It's costing them a lot more. They're losing out on fees and setup fees and things like that. And also you can say to them, if you do hire a developer, it's going to cost you a lot more money than if we to do it through our digital agency to actually set out for you. So like I said, you want to, you're going to want to go and change these packages. So I'll just show you what you can
you can do is if we go and click on edit with Elementor and then once Elementor loads if we just scroll down now let's just go to the, the app area so we've got the delivery mobile app and the booking app they're going to be the same price because App Institute charge the same price for all of their apps so we can just go over here and just click on this let's just click on this and then we've got price tag and you can just go and change this so like I said if it's 66 US dollars per month it can be 792 so you can say starting at 792 so what we can do is we can just say I don't know if it will let us put starting but we can just say 792 let's just put that in there 792 and then it's gonna say duration per year and then you, we can just put in here plus 299 setup so we can just go and put something like that in so now they can see the full price and then once again you can go and do that on here as well so let's just go and change the price over here so we can just say 792 and then in here we can say duration per year plus 299 setup so now they can see that the full price is going to cost them you know 792 plus that so just over 1100 let's say um, yeah so roughly around $1,100 so then you can just go and hit update so that your packages page is actually reflective of how much the apps will actually cost somebody now obviously when you discuss with them you can say 792 is if you pay for the whole year up front otherwise it's going to cost you 1140 which is the 95 dollars times 12 so i just wanted to show you that just so you can get a rough idea of how app institute works and also your pricing as well your pricing structure for actually building these apps so now that we've gone and had a look and like i said they've got loads of really great templates that you can use i'm going to go and show you how you can actually go and create one for a restaurant delivery app and then how we can actually go and have a look at getting the client to pay for it so towards the end of the tutorial we're going to have a look at creating contracts and how clients can pay us but i will just talk very brief briefly for the apps because like i said you don't want to be paying every month for the app coming out of your account and then you're trying to have to get the money from the client because that means you're going to have to keep a long-term relationship with your client which you really don't want you want them to be paying for things with their card so that way then once you hand over the project to them it's done and then the rest of the payments just continue from their own side so now let's just go and have a look at how we can actually create apps using app institute okay so from here let's scroll down all the way down and over here we're going to go for the restaurant takeaway app so it says create an app for your restaurant or takeaway we're going to go and click on create your app now so once you click on create your app now it will say let's give your app a name so i'm going to be building it based off of this italian restaurant from my area called il vino so what we're going to do is we're just going to go and call this il vino restaurant okay so now that we've done that we can just go and click on sorry let me just check yeah that's fine il vino restaurant so just go and click on continue so now over here it's going to say browse through our categories to find the template best suited for you so just go and click on all over here and then we are going to go and find the restaurant delivery app so let's go and scroll down and we've got restaurant over here so just click on restaurant and then actually we're going to go for takeaway let's choose takeaway because we actually want people to just go and order so choose takeaway and click on continue now this is a really great feature of app institute is that you can enter in the website of the restaurant or of the client and it will go and take the colors from that website so let's just go and try that we're just going to go to the home page of il vino restaurant and then let's just go and copy their url and we'll just paste it into here and then we're just going to go and click on go the next step will say that you can preview the app from your smartphone so you can go and have a look at what it actually looks like on a phone now you don't really need to go and do this because they have an emulator so it will show you exactly what it's going to look like on a phone anyway so i'm just going to go and click skip now from here it's going to say save and preview your app and it's going to ask you to actually go and sign up now in this part of the step obviously when you're first practicing just use your own email address but going forward when you actually get clients you're going to want to go and put your clients name email address and password in here so I'm just going to go and do that now so like I said you're going to want to go and put your clients name email address and then pick a password for your client so you can just go and pick something simple that they can go and change later on so you could just go and put it as password at one or something like that so once you've done that just go and click on continue it will then say preparing your template so just give it a few moments 
you will then be brought to this screen that says launch your app in three easy steps so you'll see appearance content and then publish so we're obviously going to go and start with appearance so let's just go and click on get started you will then be brought over to the emulator where we can actually start building the app so you will see this over here so we can just go and close this and now from here we can actually start editing our app so firstly you can see they've got this color palette over here which is really good because it does actually match the colors on their site over here so they're, they're keeping with the branding of their app and their site together which makes it easier for you to design the apps for the restaurants and for all of your different clients so next up if we go and click on images over here and then when we click on images it will say click on the image to open the editor and upload your own so we can just go and click next and then this one's going to say we can go and upload a splash screen so that's the first screen that the people see when they actually come into the app so we can go and do that and then after that it's going to say we can go and save our progress so i'm just going to cl click on okay got it so in terms of the app icon you can see it's 1024 by 1024 so we can go and create these really easily in actual canva again so we're going to just go over to canva and then from canva i can go to custom dimensions over here and i can put 1024 by 1024 and just click on create new design now from here I can actually just go and create that app icon so if we just go and have a look we've got their logo over here which is just some pretty standard text that says Ilvino restaurant now ideally you would want your client to actually go and send you their logo so something like this if they do actually have a proper logo or just go and send you a file even a PNG image that you can go and add so to go and create something like this though is really simple so you can see they've got wine in the background so I could go and create an, an app icon that's actually similar to that so if we just go to photos over here and I can just go and search wine so let's just go and look for a photo of some wine so we could just go and drag this onto here and let's just go and make it like this so we can go and do that and then next up we can actually just go and get the color so if we just go over to here and if we go to theme so let's just go click on yes save and continue so we're just going to go back to theme so we can go and get the color so let's just go and click on this and we can just go and click next so it's just telling us about our different color schemes so just go and click next and finish so let's just go and close this so now we've got the tabs icon so i'm going to go for this one so i'm just going to go and actually copy this so let's go and copy that head back to canva and now we can go and draw a square so let's just go and grab a square so we just want a normal square so let's just go and grab this and we can just go and put this over here and then we can go and change the color of this square so let's just go over here and i can go and paste the one in that i just copied and now we can go and change the transparency of this so we can make it just a little bit transparent so something like that and now finally i can just go and add some text so if i just go and add that on there and i can just call this Ilvino, like this and then I can go and change the text to something that's similar to one they're using now like I said ideally you'd want your client to actually send you their logo so that you could go and add this over here but if you can't you can just go and change it to something that's similar to the font that they're using on their website so let's just go and have a look if we can find one because at the end of the day this is just going to be the app icon it's not going to be very big people aren't going to be paying much attention to it so if we just go and click on this let's go and have a look at how that looks does that look similar to this one over here fairly similar especially when it's going to be on a phone on an app screen you probably won't be able to tell the difference so now we can just go and drag this into the center so let's just make it a bit bigger now if you want to you can go and add delivery at the bottom as well so if i just go and duplicate this and then i'll just drag that and i'll just put delivery in here delivery so now let's just go and change this to something a bit smaller so we can go and change it to something like that and then we can go and just move it like that so now we've got Ilvino delivery so that's going to be their app icon I'm just going to make this a tiny little bit smaller 210 I think 210 and then just move this to the side and then we can just drag it into the center so there we go so now we have their app icon we can just go and download this and we can just go 
and click on download and now that this has been downloaded let's just go and close this we can go back over here to the app builder let's go back to images and then over here we've got our app icon we can just go and click on this and then we can just go and click on upload image and now you can see I've got that Ilvino image over here so let's just go and click on open and now we can see we've got Ilvino delivery so that's how it's going to look on a phone so that looks really cool so next up we have the splash screen which is 180 by one by 1920 so let's just go and create a splash screen as well so we can just go back to Canva and we can go and change these custom dimensions again so it was 1080 by 1920 and just click on create new design and then once again I'm just going to go and create the similar thing but for a splash screen now so this is the screen when they first open the app so we can just go and type in wine again and let's just go to photos and type in wine so wine and let's just find a different picture of some wine this time so let's go and see if there's a better one let's just go for this one over here this one looks pretty cool and let's just see I don't know it might not be big enough so if we just go and drag that that might look a little bit weird so let's just delete that let's see if we can find a better one so let's just see if there's any better wine ones that one looks pretty nice there that one looks good so and that one's a little bit more applicable in terms of size so now we can just go and do that and then once again we can go to elements and we can go and just drag a square over that again just like we've done so let's just go and grab this square and we can just make it like that and just drag it like that and then let me just go and get that color so let's just close this and we're just going to go and copy this color over here so let's just go new color and copy this and then we can just go and change this color to this once again let's change the transparency to 80 and now we can just go and put Ilvino delivery again so what font was this I'll gray up medium so let's just go back over here and then we can just go and let's go and have a look at what they've currently got on their splash screen authentic street food so we can just say best Italian food or something like that now like I said ideally we'd want to put their logo on here as well but because we don't have it I'm just gonna go and put Ilvino and then I can just go and find that font again so let's just scroll down see if we can find it let's just go for this one Allegra medium and then we can go and change this so let's go and change this to let's say 150 there we go perfect and then let's just drag this to there and then we can just go and if you want to go and add something on there for your client you could go and say the best Italian in wherever wherever your area is let's just say London and then we can go and change this font size to let's say 80 all of it and change that to 80 the best Italian in London maybe even a little bit smaller than that let's say 60 and there we go so now we can just go and do that and now we've got our splash screen for their app as well so once again let's just change this to splash and just download this so we just click on download and then just click on download again so now that we have downloaded that let me just close this we we'll go back over here and we can go and upload our splash screen so let's just go over here click upload image and then from here I'll just pick Ilvino splash click open and now we can see when they first open the app they're gonna see Ilvino the best Italian in London and that looks pretty cool and that only took a couple of minutes to actually just go and create so that was really easy so now that you've done that we can just go and click on save and once you do that you will move on to content and layout so let's just go and click on content so this is of course where it gets a little bit more tricky because we're going to have to go and add items to their menu and things like that so let's just go and have a look we can actually go and close this if you want to go and delete anything so for example this home you can just click remove from my app account we can remove from app 
and more as well you can just go and manage the more tab as well so you can go and add anything you want so we'll say drag tabs into the tab bar below which means that you can go and drag any of these. So you've got book a table, you could drag that in there. You've got loyalty coupons, you can drag that in there as well. So you can go and discuss these things with your clients. You can say, we can set you up with loyalty coupons. So if people make five deliveries, they get five pounds off. Or if you want to, you can go and add booking tables on there as well. So people can go and book a table so you don't have to keep taking calls when your restaurant actually opens back up again. You can add directions in there so we can go and add maps on so people can go and find it. Now this one I think is a little bit redundant because we've got Google Google Maps, everybody just uses that. And if somebody wants to find a restaurant, they'll just go and type in the postcode for it. But things like loyalty tabs, so coupon codes and things like that, when people continuously order, that's how restaurants can actually go and build up a client base that keeps coming back. So this is a good thing to discuss with your clients. We can say, like I said, every time if they make five orders, then they can actually go and get a discount on their sixth order or something like that. So we'll have a look at adding this one in a moment. Now, firstly, you're gonna, going to want to have a look at the menu. So let's just go and click on the menu. And when you click on it, you will see this come up. So let's just go and click on edit content. Now, when you first click onto the menu, if we actually scroll down over here, we will actually see the current menu. So we've got starters, house specials, noodles, sides, and rice dishes. So this is just the default menu that they generate for you. So you can actually just go and edit this to go and create the menu for your client. So if we go and have a look at here, let's go and have a look at what they've got for starters. So for starters, I'm assuming these are their starters. So it's gonna be bruschetta, calamari, gambarini picanti so all of these italian things that i can't pronounce but we can actually just go and add these to our menu so let's say we want to add bruschetta to the menu we can go and just copy this bruschetta let's head back to the app builder and under starters you can go and click on this plus button over here and then over here we've got all of these different things so over here what we can do is we've got crispy spring rolls so we can go and click on edit on this and then it will come up over here, crispy spring rolls. And instead of crispy spring rolls, I can go and change the name to bruschetta. And then over here, we've got the price of bruschetta, 5.95. So I can just go and copy this. And then let's just backspace this. And then in the price, I can go and put 5.95. And then we've got the description. So we've got their description over here from their menu. So you're going to want to just your, to get your client to send them your menu, or you can go and look at it online like I'm doing here. And then in the description, I can just go and paste their description in there. So that's done. So now that we've done that, we can just go and click on save item. So you see, I'm, I'm getting an error in valid price, and that's just because I've got that in there. So now I can just go and click on save item again. So now I've saved that item. If we scroll down over here, we will see on the starters, we've got bruschetta now if you want to you can go and change it as well you can see i've put it all in caps so i can go and change it to bruschetta like that and just click on save item so now that i've done that you can also add an image if you really want to i don't think it's that important personally so now we can go and do that for all of the different starters so let's go and do it for chicken skewers say we can go and click edit again then we can come over here we can go and do calamari fritty so we can go and add that in calamari Pretty, and then we can go and have a look at the price. So that's six ninety five. So then in here, I can go and put six ninety five, and then over here we've got fried calamari with spicy mayonnaise. So let's just go copy that, and we can just go and put that in the description over here, and just click on save item. So now, if you want to actually add an item, you can just go and add an item. So you can go and pick your menu. That you want to add it to so let's say you had more than all of these let's say you went and changed all of these and they still had more items to add to their menu you can go and just click on the category that you want to add it to so you want to add it to starters you can go and add the name the price the description and just click on add item and then that will just add the item to the starters now we've got house specials over here you can go and change this so we could go and click on edit over here and then over here you can see it's come up with house specials. So we can go and change this. Let's just say we could go and change this to main mains or main menu, something like that. So let's go and have a look at their site and see what they've called it. So over here, we could go and do pizza. So we could go and say, we're gonna do a pizza menu. So over here, I can go and change this to pizza and just click on save. And now we've got pizza over there. And then once again, we've got chicken special, sweet and sour, so I can go and edit these. So if I click on edit, 
over here I could change this to a pizza so I could go to change this to pizza Romana let's say so pizza Romana and then I can go and add the pricing 9.95 and then once again I can just go and add in their description so we just take that and paste that in there now like I said your client they could potentially go and do this themselves but many people aren't very confident using technology and also it's generally as a business easier to just go and pay and have it set up for you so that you can start running because they don't want to sit there spending hours doing this type of thing when they can just pay you to do the service for them so now that we've done that we can just go and click on save item now you see you've got the image here we can just go and click clear and get rid of the image if you want to you can say is there any images of your food that you want to send us and we can include that in your app so now we can just go and click on save item so all you're going to do is basically just go and do this until your menu is completely done so you can see all i would have to do is add all my starters add all of the pizzas add all of the pastas and the calzones and and the kids menu as well if we want to and then once that's done we can go and add the wine menu as well maybe if they're doing wine delivery so we can go and do all of that and once you've done all of that like i said it's really easy to go and edit this and add items and you can just go and choose the category they want to add it to and you can also go and put out of stock if you want to so once you've done all that you just click save so now i've shown you how to go and do the menu let's go and have a look at the cart the account and also setting up the loyalty tabs as well so let's just go and click on ok got it so let's go and have a look at the cart over here so we're going to go and click on this and click it click edit content so over here we've got takeaway information so we can go and fill all of this information out based on what our client tells us. So the restaurant owner actually tells us. So we've got reject orders placed outside of opening times. Of course, we're going to want to most likely tick that. Then collection only. Well, some restaurants might say collection only. So for example here, I think this one is collection only, I'm assuming. So you would want to go and click tick for that one. But if not, then we've got delivery. So you can do delivery only as well. So you can say delivery time, how long it's roughly going to take in minutes. So we could say on average, each delivery takes 45 minutes. Then you can go and put in your delivery postcode errors and these are the same as zip code if you're in the US. So let's say they only want to deliver within a certain area. So where this restaurant is, which is based in a place called Hertfordshire in the UK, they might want to just go and deliver only in that area. So we can go and just put in all of the different postcodes for that area. So SG13, SG12 and so on. So you just go and do that and it just says separate the postcodes with a comma. So you can go and do that for zip codes as well. So we can just go and delete this now. And then we've got sent order confirmation to customers. So you're going to want to go and tick that as well, of course, because we want our customers to get an order confirmation as well. Then we also have collection time. So we can say average collection time. You can collect it once again in 45 minutes. We also have collection discounts. So these are things that you can go and discuss with your clients. Do you? So go and have a look at this and make some notes when you create a practice app and think about the types of things that you want to offer to your clients. You can say, do you want to offer collection discounts? So if somebody comes and collects, they get 10% off. So once again in here, you can go and change that to 10%. Do you want to add a delivery cost or do you want to have free delivery? So if you go for delivery cost, you can say, let's say 299. And then you can say free delivery for orders over 15.99 so you can go and add those things so you can go and talk about these things with your clients so go in here and have a look at all of the different things that they offer and then you're going to want to go and discuss this with your clients minimum order value so you can say we only do delivery for orders over let's say 10 pounds so something like that and then we've got sales tax and paypal payment fee so i know that sales tax in the uk is 20 percent. so you'd want to go and put that in there in you in the us i'm not 100 percent sure let's have a look sales tax in the us it's saying between 2.9 and 7.25%. So you'd have to go and ask your client, I guess, if you're in the US, what their sales tax is, because I'm not 100% sure about that. But in the UK, it's 20%. And then we've got the PayPal payment fee. So this is a fee that will be charged to the customers through paying through PayPal. So we can just go and say, let's say 1%. So then we've got postcode overrides as well. So this basically just means a certain postcode, you can actually go and charge them extra if it's extra far away. Now, I, don't, I doubt a lot of your clients are going to want to deliver to really far areas anyway, but you can go and add this as well. So you can say for a certain postcode, if it's something far, then we can go and make the delivery cost 4.99 instead. 
So you can go and do something like that. Now you can just click remove if you want to. Next up, we have payments. So if we just go and click on this, you can go and add credit card payment gateways. So if your client wants to be able to accept credit card payments, then I recommend setting them up with a Stripe account. Now, once again, this is going to be have, have to be something that you discuss with them and say, do you want to accept payments? We're going to use a payment gateway called Stripe and you're going to explain what Stripe is to them. And for those of you that don't know what Stripe is, it's basically like PayPal, but for card payments. So if you go over to Stripe over here, you're going to go and create them a Stripe account, which is really simple. So you're gonna go and set them up with a Stripe account using their email and everything like that. And then all you have to do is connect your Stripe, their Stripe account that you create for them to their app. So you go and put in a live secret key. So basically this is a key from a person's Stripe account. So if you go and create them a Stripe account and set them up with it, which is really simple, you just have to fill in all of their details for them. So their address and their name and their email address and things like that. And then when you actually log into their Stripe account, there will be a secret key, something called a secret key. So you can just go and copy that and paste that into here. And then you can go and accept what card types that you want, transaction fee, and then require billing address. So if they want to purchase with a card, do they have to go and put in a billing address? So you can say yes. And then once again, accept PayPal or card payments via PayPal. So you wanna go and click accept. And then if they don't have a PayPal account, then you're gonna go and set their business up with a PayPal account. Once again, it's really simple. Just go over to PayPal and sign up using their email address. And then all you have to do is go and add these things into the PayPal API username, the signature and the password. And you can just go and click on this so this will go through the setup guide with you, but it's fairly simple, it's nothing too strenuous. You're just gonna to have to go and do that with your client's PayPal account. And then you also have allow cash on delivery. So you can say to your client, do you want customers to be able to pay with cash? And if not, we can just go and untick this. So let's just untick that. So now after that, we've got order, accept and reject. So let's just open this up. So what this basically means is that the client, the restaurant owner can actually go and accept orders before they are fully confirmed to the customer. Now, personally, I don't think that this is that important. Generally, when someone orders, you should just have it accepted. And then if it is rejected, then they can just go and call up their customer and say, sorry, we're out of stock on this item or something like that, or we're closing early today. So you can go and discuss this with them. But basically what this just means is when an order comes through to the restaurant, they have the decision where they want to accept it. But then that's just gonna make them have a little bit of extra work having to accept all of their orders. So I wouldn't really worry too much about this. Next up, we have loyalty over here. So this basically just allows them to earn a percentage off as a customer. So you could say you're gonna get 10% off if you spend 100 pounds, something like that. So that is a way for the restaurant owner to actually get more paying loyal customers to actually build up their client base. So you can go and discuss this with your restaurant clients as well. Then we have special offers as well. So these would be things like the special offers on the menu. So you can go and change this, or you can just go and go no discount and then you can say first order discount so for, this is a first way for when a restaurant actually launches its app you can say to them when you firstly launch your app you can go and offer a 20 percent discount on all of your first orders and that's going to get more customers in using your app from the beginning so you could go and say or even something really high like 30 percent so loads of people start using their app from the beginning so you can go and discuss this with them and say when you actually launch your app you can offer a first order discount so you can get some customers in straight away then we have additional menus over here. So this is basically for people that offer different menus. But to be honest with you, you've already set up the menu. So this is not really gonna be that important anyway. So I wouldn't worry too much about this tab. Then we have response messages. So we can just go in here. And this is basically what the customer receives when they make a order on their delivery app. So I would just go and leave this as default, to be honest with you. So you've got, we'll start preparing it out and we'll deliver it to you within time. And then the time gets taken from the time that's put in here. So that's really good as well. So now I've got the response messages. Like I said, you can go and discuss this with your client as well. Are you happy for these response messages to be fine? They might say, no, we want to change it to something. Uh, I'm an Italian restaurant and I want to say, you will be ready to parlay Italiano in 45 minutes or something, you know, some catchy or gimmicky slogan that they want to put in there. But like I said, personally, I would just leave it as it is. And then finally, we've got the notification information. So we've got over here, hide subcategory in email confirmation to business. So this basically just means if they have a subcategory for their menu, when the order comes through, it's gonna be hidden from the email confirmation. So you can just go and do that um, because generally the restaurant is gonna know what they're making when the order comes through. So once again, don't worry too much about this. And then we can just go and click on save. So now that I've clicked on save, you will see it's just telling me that I'm required to go and enter this in. So I'm just gonna go and say disabled 
and let's just try and click save again it might just ask me to go and put the PayPal no it hasn't so that's perfectly fine so we've had a look at how the cart works so let's just go and now try dragging the loyalty tab in there so let's just grab this and we can just go and drag this into here let's try that again so there we go so now that I've dragged that in there that just means when somebody clicks on more they will see the rest so we can see I've got coupon chat feedback special offers coupon and earn free takeaway so I'm actually just going to go and delete this one remove from my app because we don't need two coupons so now we've got everything else in here so we can go and change some of these so we've got coupons so if we go over here we can click on edit content and once again you can go and add in some coupons in here so over here we've got buy one get one free value is one starter description is buy one starter and get another one for free so we can go and add in coupons for our clients so we could go and say something like this if we go and click on add coupon we could say let's call this one two for tuesdays so we can discuss this with our client as well we can say we can set you up with some coupons so that way we can go and build up your customer base because they'll keep coming back every tuesday for two for tuesdays so we've got type over here so this is going to be buy one get one free so they're going to buy any pizza and any pizza free so then you can put in the description something like buy one large pizza on tuesdays and get another free and then you've got your disclaimer you've got your start date expiration date so we can say the start date is whenever expiration date is you could just say you could do it for a year's time whenever you want and then the passcode is just going to be we can just go and put in two for two something like that and then you can just go and click on save so this is a really easy way for you to go and set up these discounts for your clients within their app so let's just go and click on save so we've done coupons we also have chat over here so people can actually go and chat to the restaurants and say hi can I get an update on my order so we can just go and click on this and click on edit content so you can go and actually change this and say let's say the restaurant didn't want users to be able to contact them they only wanted to be able to contact their customers we can go and say admin to users only in this way the restaurant can only contact the user through the app so they can say sorry there's been a bit of a delay and your pizza is going to be an extra 15 minutes but the user cannot write back and say hi where is my pizza i've been waiting for 45 minutes and it hasn't arrived and you can go and turn on email notifications now some people might not see the value in having this some restaurants might just think i can't be bothered to go on to the app and start answering my customers concerns and things like that so you can always just go over here let's just click on it and then we can just go and click on remove from app so once again this is something that you can go and discuss with your clients now you might want to when i go through pricing later on we might want to go and actually discuss how we can actually price these so we could make each of these a different price so we could say to add in a chatbot is an extra $49 or $29 to add in coupons is another $29 to add in special offers is another $29 because that way you can go and do upsells to your clients you can say right we'll just say you're the basic delivery app all it performs is for your customers to be able to make purchases through the app and then you deliver to them now if you want all of this extra functionality like coupons chats special offers and things like that then we're going to go and add those on as extra services it's totally up to you how you want to run your digital agency now most of these things are pretty just straightforward so what i think you should do is just come onto app institute and just have a play around pretty much but most of the stuff is fairly easy and just going to be setting up for your client so for example let's just go and have a look at feedback one last one just to have a look at and then in here people can actually customers can actually go and give the restaurant feedback within their app so you can say quality between five and one and then we've got delivery time between five and one service between five and one and so on so you can just go and change these as well you can go and edit any of them if you want to so you can go and speak about your client what do you most value about feedback from your customers what do you want them to value so do you want to receive feedback from your customers regarding price or regarding delivery time or regarding the taste of the food and things like that and that's where they can actually gain some valuable feedback from their customers as well to improve their restaurant so you can go and add this in as well and this is really easy like i said you can just change it from one to five you can go and change what they're actually giving feedback on and things like that so all of these things within app institute like i said they're pretty intuitive they're fairly easy to figure out and they're fairly simple to go and edit so now what we can do is if we just scroll up here we can just go and preview the app 
So let's just go and have a look at how the app's actually going to look from a customer's point of view. So we can see here, this is how the app's going to look when they actually open it. So they can just go and click on menu. They can say, oh, I'm going to go for some starters today. Let me add one bruschetta. So you can see, because I've actually put the closing times in, it's not allowing me. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go back to the editor and I'm going to go to cart. So let's just go and click on edit content on cart. And I'm just going to allow, I'm not going to reject orders placed outside of the times for now. So I'm just going to go and click save on that now. And now let's just go and preview the app again. So now let's just go back to the menu and let's go and try and add, let's go and add some pizzas in. So let's go and add that in, add it to order. So then they can go to the cart and all they have to do is click on checkout. So let me just wait for this. So now they can actually go and click login and put in their account details and then they've got loyalty over here so they can go and redeem their loyalty vouchers as well and their special offers and then they've got history as well over here so you can see that the customer can look at their past orders as well so that's really cool and then if they go to more they can go to feedback and say the quality i think the quality was a one it was really poor i'm not going to order from you guys again and then if they go to more again let's click on back they can go to coupons so they can go and redeem this coupon over here and then they can just go and put in that passcode. So I think it was two, two for two, was it? And redeem. So let me just try that again. I don't know if I've spelled it right. Two for two, redeem. The coupon has been redeemed. So then they can get a two for one pizza. And then if we go back over here, we've got earn a free takeaway. So over here, it will say free takeaway worth 15 pounds. So you can see it will say order six takeaways and if we just scroll down, let's get rid of this, all the six takeaways and then we'll pay for the seventh. So once again, this is a really good thing that you can offer to your restaurant clients. So you can say to them, this is a great way of building up loyalty with your customers. So now we've gone and done this, let's go back to the editor. And now that's basically how you can go and change everything within the app. So it's really simple, really easy way to go and set up apps for your clients. So now we can just go and click on navigation. So the navigation is basically how the menu is going to look within the app. So let's just go and click on next and click OK, got it. So we can just go and pick the menu that we want. So to be honest with you, I like the one that we currently have, this one at the bottom like this, or you can say tab bar with, without labels. So you could go and do it like this or tab bar. I actually like the tab bar one like this, not the transparent one. So I'm just going to go and pick that. And now all you have to do is go and click on submit app. Now, once you get to this screen, just click on next, and then they are gonna tell you about the different plans. So we can just go and click on this. And now from here, what we can do is, if we scroll down, we can go and select a plan. So you're going to want to go and select this one here. This is the main one that your clients are gonna need for them to have iPhone and Android. So then we can just go and click on select plan. And then it is gonna tell you the price over here. So this is the price that the client is going to pay. And then they're also going to pay you the setup fee as well. So like I said, that you can go and decide on that, but I recommend something like 2.99 kind of setup fee, something like that. So I'm just going and click on okay. So when you click on that, it's gonna come up with the billing details. Now what I recommend you doing here, you just keep this tab open and then you're going to call up your client and you're going to say we need you to enter in your billing details so that we can finalize the app for you so before you do any of this if we just close this and then we just go back to navigation here and then we go to the preview with your client you're going to go through the app with them you're going to show them the preview of the app so what you can do is you can call them up you can get them onto a skype call and then you can share your screen with them it's fairly simple to easily to set up skype and share a screen so then you can go and share the screen with them and you can show them the app and how it all works so you can show them look, this is the menu we've done for you everything is here this is how the cart works this is how the coupon codes work the feedback works and you can talk them through everything and then once they're finally happy you can say to them on the skype call okay so are you happy with how the app is is there anything you want us to change is there anything you want us to add any features and if they're happy with everything and they're ready to sign it off you can then just say all right we're ready to submit the app so then all you would have to do is click on publish and launch whilst you're still on the skype call sharing the screen with them and then you're going to say so we are going to go and select that plan for you now that we discussed earlier and then you're going to select the plan click ok and then all you have to do is let them take control of your screen and then they can just go and enter in their payment details so if your client wants to pay with card you can let them take control of the screen they can go and enter in their payment details and then they can just go and click on save and apply package and their app will be published or if your client wants to go and pay with paypal you can just say okay you can pay with paypal 
can you just take control of the screen and now you're just going to go and enter in your paypal details and that is basically it guys it's as simple as that you just have to have some good communication with your clients now i'm going to show you how you can send your clients contracts as well because after they've done this they haven't actually paid you for setting up so at the end of the tutorial i'm going to show you how you can go and send them contracts so you make sure you get paid for setting up websites apps zoom and all of those types of things but in terms of the app this is how you can actually get them to pay for it and like i said because you don't want to pay for this out of your own paypal account or out of your own card because that means you've got a long-term relationship with the client then you need to keep renewing it and you need to keep contacting them every year saying do you still want to renew your app and have it running and then you need them to transfer you the money and things like that so it's going to get really complicated so you just call them up you get them on a skype call you share the screen with them you show them the app and if they're happy with it then you just come through to here let them take control of your screen and then that way they can ju just go and enter in their payment details and that's it it's done so that is how you can use App Institute. It's a really great piece of software to go and create apps. And like I said, as I've shown you, it's fairly simple. It's completely drag and drop and lots of good features that you can go and add. And the same with the booking one. So I'm not gonna go through all of it for the booking apps because you can see how easy it is to actually use this. But I recommend before you actually go and start looking for clients, just go on here and have a play around just to make sure that you're comfortable with it. But I think you can see from what I've shown you so far how easy it is to use and how easy it is to go and add things to your app and things like that. So now that we've done that, the next thing that we are gonna do for this tutorial is go and have a look at how we can actually go and start finding clients who are gonna pay us for our services. So let's now have a look at how we can start to get some clients for our digital agency. And when it comes to finding clients for your digital agency, you're going to want to go super local. So you're going to want to find small businesses within your local area that you can contact and offer your services to. So for example, me, I live in an area called Hertfordshire and within that area is a smaller area called Hartford. So I'm gonna go and look at all of the different businesses that I could target within Hartford and offer my digital agency services to. Now, what we can do is over here, over in Google, I've just typed in service-based businesses and I've just found this article, 145 new service business ideas. Now this has got loads of different service-based businesses and from here we can go and take some of these to go and find some local businesses that we can contact. So I've just been having a look through here and taking some of these service-based businesses at, out. So let's just go and firstly have a look at Meditation Instructor. So all I've done is I've gone over to Google and I've typed in Meditation Instructor Hartford. So like I said, we're going super local. So if I were to type in something like Meditation Instructor London, we're gonna get lots of big brands and big businesses coming up. And there's no point really contacting those types of big businesses because they probably already are online. So the services that we're offering them, they're probably not going to need or respond to. So we're looking for smaller businesses within local areas. So over here, you can see there's a few that have come up. So we're just gonna go and have a look at a few of these. So firstly, we've got Yoga with Sunil over here. So I have to go and click on this. You can see, firstly, he is offering online yoga classes. So he's still trying to keep his business running. But the way his site is, we can see it's not very well done. And he's saying, email me to join. Join. So that's going to cost him a lot of extra time having to go through all the emails and sending things out. And if I scroll down to the bottom here, I notice that his website is created with WordPress. So I can say to him, I can go contact him, offer him a service and say, look, we can offer you to redesign your site and actually create it so people can just go and book your online yoga classes with ease without having, without you having to go and get them to email you. We can also say you're, you're gonna be missing out on clients because people might come over to your site, they see that you do online yoga classes, but because of the process of having to email you and then you're emailing them back and forth, they don't eventually actually come on to the online classes. Whereas if you have a more sleek booking system where people can just pay directly through the site, you're gonna get more clients who are actually gonna come onto your online classes. So that is firstly how we can go and find some really easy clients, like I said. So next up, I've just gone and had a look at a few of the other ones. So we're just gonna open this one up next, which is the Hartford Buddhist Group. So I've just gone and clicked on this and on their site, we can see that they are offering online yoga classes as well. So you can see they're doing Zoom over here with the Zoom meetings, but you can see it's not the greatest way of doing things they could probably do with a booking system. And once again, their website is powered by WordPress, which is the same as this site over here. So you can just say, look, we'll offer you some website redesign services and we can go and redesign your site so that people can just go and book those online yoga classes with you and you don't have to have it outlined like this because 
if I'm a customer of theirs and I come onto this site and I want to do an online yoga class, it doesn't make it immediately obvious to me how I can actually go and book that online yoga class. Whereas if we go and redesign their site for them and create it like this, they can just come on, book an appointment and get straight on to those online yoga classes. So once again, I've found another potential client. So when you are going through these, what you're going to want to do is actually go and take some of their details down and just put it into a spreadsheet. So you can see here, I've got booking system, membership area, Zoom setup, and restaurant delivery. So we'll go over restaurant delivery later on. So for now, booking system, first one I could say is Sunil, sorry, yoga with Sunil. He's a potential client and I could potentially offer him a booking system. So now let's just go back over here and we can see if we can find his contact details. So we're just gonna have a look in here. So if we go to contact and then from here, if I scroll down, I should be able to go and get his contact details. Let's see if he's got an email over here or if he has a phone number. So that's mainly what we're looking for. We're looking for an email or a phone number. So let's keep scrolling. So maybe let's try and click on this and see what happens. So we can see he doesn't actually have an email address or a number on his site. So let's go back over to Google and let's see if we can find one from here. So we can see he's got a number over here. So if I just click on this and I can just go and copy his number down. So now I can go and contact him and say, I'm gonna offer you some services to redesign your site, make it easier. And that's gonna be a better way for you to go and get clients. So now we just go and paste that in there. And I'm just gonna go and put his website address down as well. So we can just go and copy this from here. And we're just gonna go and put that in our spreadsheet just so we know which company it is that we're gonna contact. So before you go and contact all of them, then that way you can just go and have a little look again, just so you can make sure that you are aware of what services you're gonna offer before you contact them via email or via phone. So that's the first one we found. Next one we can go and have a look at is the Hartford Buddhist Group. So we can go and have a look for them, see if they've got any contact details. So let's go to contact us. And over here we can see, let's see, they've just got a form. So they don't actually have any contact details. So once again, we'll go back to Google we go to Hartford Buddhist Group over here. Let's see, they have got a phone number. So we can just go and grab their phone number. And then we're just gonna say Hartford Buddhist Group. And then we're just going to put their phone number in. And like I said, you just wanna go and put in their web address as well. So let's just go and do that. So. So there you can see it's really easy to go and I've already found two potential clients. Now, we will obviously go through later on how we can go and contact them and what we can say to them. But for now, you just wanna go and gather as many potential clients as you can. So next one over here, we have Melanie Pittman. So if I just go over to Melanie Pittman, we can see over here, she's doing courses and workshops. So let's see if she's got any online stuff that we can do. So let's go to contacts and bookings. So over here, we have contacts. And she does have a booking system. So let's go click on her online booking system and see if she's already offering. So you can see she's already offering meditation via Zoom. So really, we don't really have any services that we could potentially offer her. We could potentially offer her to create a membership area, maybe where she goes and actually records her lessons and then people can actually pay to rewatch them. So we could go and offer her something like that. So we could just go and grab her email address again. And then we're gonna go to membership area instead. So this is gonna be, was it meditation with Melanie? And then in here, I can just go and put in her email address and I could go and grab her number if it's on here. Let's have a look if she has a number on here. So she doesn't have a number on here, but that's fine. So now we also have a potential client that we could offer our membership websites to as well. So we could say to her, so you do offer online yoga classes via Zoom, but you could go and actually record those yoga classes, put them in a membership area, and then you could get people to pay you 10 pounds a month so they can watch all the classes in one go. So you could go and create different classes. So we could offer her a service like that. And you can see that's how easy it is. So you just wanna go and find some service-based businesses. Like I said, go and have a look through this and see all of the different service-based businesses that there are. And you probably think of some that, that are in your area as well. And when you have a look on here, you might think of some that you've never even heard of. And then you're just gonna go and type that into Google. 
in your area, in your local area, so like I said, super local, and then just go and check out the different businesses that are offering this service and see how you can help them. So let's just go and have a look at another one. So let's go to Fitness Instructor now. So you can see I've just typed in Fitness Instructor in Hartford. And once again, I've just gone and started to have a look at some of their websites and what they're offering. So I clicked on this first one, which is Reborn Fitness. And as you can see, they're already offering online coaching. Their, their website looks pretty good. So they're really not going to want to use our services. So straight off the bat, I can just go and say, no, they're not gonna be a client that we could potentially close. Next up was Equilibrium. So we can see over here, Equilibrium Training. So I've just gone and clicked on this. Now their site is a little bit different. It's not very good. It's, it seems a little bit old fashioned. And you can't see any inclination over here that they're offering online coaching or any coaching through Zoom or a membership area for their workouts or anything like that. So these could be another potential client that I could go and contact and say, we can offer you a booking system, people can book online and you can start doing Zoom classes to get your business up and running again. So once again, we could just go and copy their number and we can just go and put this in here. So we could go and offer them the booking system services. So we just go and put their number in there. And then once again, we could see if they've got an email address, let's go and have a look. We've got their email address just there. So we can just go and take that and paste that in there. And then we can just say equilibrium. I'm not sure how you spell it, let's have a look. Let's just copy this. So that's another potential client right there that we can contact. So you can see how easy it is and how quick you can start finding potential clients. And then later on, obviously, you will go and contact them and offer them your services. So let's just go and have a look at another one. So over here, as I was scrolling down, I think quite a few of these ones already had online coaching. So let's just go and have a look at this one, for example, Sculpt. Let's just go and have a look at it. Sculpt Personal Trainer. And we can see online real time co-video personal training. So you can see that they're doing really well. So they've already got their video one-to-one -one PT sessions. So once again, we're not really gonna be able to offer them any services. We could go and offer them a membership area maybe if they wanted to level up a bit, but that's gonna be more unlikely for somebody that's already found a way to go online themselves. So as I was scrolling down, I found Evolution Health and Fitness. So that was another one. So let's just go and close Equilibrium. So Evolution was over here. So if we go to their home, they don't have, once again, they don't really see say that they're offering online coaching or anything like that. So we can see over here, they don't offer any online coaching. So then I went to services and prices just to see if they were offering online coaching again. And I couldn't see anything that they were offering. So let's just go and click on book now and see if they are offering any booking for Zoom or anything like that. So when you go and book, book now, it just brings you to the contact page. So once again, that's another potential client. Now you can see over here, we don't know if we were to redesign the website if it's made with WordPress. Now, don't worry if the site isn't made with WordPress. You're not going to have to go and learn some other piece of technology so that you can redo their site. All you have to do is find out where their domain is from. So if it's from GoDaddy or if it's from Namecheap or something like that. And when you purchase them hosting with SiteGround, you just have to redirect their domain name from GoDaddy or Namecheap or wherever it is over to SiteGround. So over here, I've just found a video that says how to set up a GoDaddy domain on the SiteGround servers. So it's pretty easy, it doesn't matter. For most companies, for example, if it was One and One, which is a popular domain company, or like I said, GoDaddy or Namecheap or whatever it is, generally it's fairly easy to go and then add that domain to their SiteGround hosting. It's not very hard. Once you figure out how to do it once, it's fairly easy. And then all you have to do is go and install WordPress on the domain through, through SiteGround, like I showed you in the beginning of the video. And then you can just go and just, just redesign their site from scratch. So for example, this Evolution website, not 100% sure if it's a WordPress site. If it is a WordPress site, it's easy. We, we can just go in, log in, like how we would with our actual digital agency site. And then we can go and make the changes and we can go and add any booking systems that we want to, membership systems and things like that. But like I said, if it's not, let's say it was a Weebly site or a Wix site, then all we have to do is go and transfer the domain from Wix, Weebly, GoDaddy over to their new SiteGround hosting, then just install WordPress onto that domain name and you can just redesign it for them. So it's not rocket science, it's not really hard, and maybe that's something you wanna practice again before you actually start offering the services. Or you can just go and get clients and then just learn as you go. It's still fine to go and do that, as long as you just don't let them know that you've never done it before then I'm sure you'll find a way to actually figure it out. Like I said, it's not rocket science. And then you can just go and redesign their website for them. So let's just go and have a look at a few others. So Evolution, we could potentially get in contact with them. 
so let's just go once again I'm not going to copy all of them I'll just do this for the last one we could just oh, it's not letting me copy it so like I said you get the idea you'd want to copy that and put that into the booking system spreadsheet area so we've done that now next up was one over here which was Alex Pinto so that was the next one under evolution so I just opened him up and you can see he's doing online live sessions and he has a members area so once again probably not the best person to contact to offer services so we can just close that then we had down here which was Kate Marshall personal training and I've just opened this up now for her it wasn't 100% sure if she's offering online services or not so if I went to make an appointment and then it did bring me over to this online scheduling but we can see it still doesn't say there's no indication of if she's offering online tutoring or, or sorry online PT sessions or not so if I was to click on this then pick her and then I pick an available day and then it's asking me to create a profile but once again there's no indication as to whether she's offering online so we could go and say to her we can go and set you up with zoom so you can go and set up or once again she could be someone we could offer a membership area to so her clients that she currently has she can go and film some workouts for them and they just pay a membership to go and watch her videos so that's another potential client and then finally over here which one was this bbody.co.uk so let's just go and see where I found them somewhere down here so let's just go and open theirs up. You can see it's a WordPress site. And let's just go and have a look if we go home over here. And then from their home, once again, no indication that they're offering online services. But I think if we go to their timetable, we can see they are doing this watch, which I'm assuming means that they're doing online PT sessions. So they're using Google Hangouts, they're using Facebook Live. So we could go and say, we'll say, well, Zoom, it's a lot easier to use than Google Hangouts and Facebook Live. And we could also go and Let's see when we click on book what happens. It brings them to this booking system here. So maybe we could go and say we'll redesign it and make your booking system a little bit more seamless instead of having your client, your customers having to click on loads of different things. So we could go and offer a web, web redesign for them again, potentially. So you can see there's loads of different clients that you can go and contact. And these, I've only just been doing this for the last five minutes. I've only already looked at just me, meditation, and fitness instructor and I've only looked in one area so if I have to go and type in let's go and type in somewhere else meditation instructor in this area let's say and we could once again this is another local area near where I live and we can go and see there are loads of other different clients now that we could go and see if we could contact so let's go and have a look at FISU meditation let's go and have a look at this and see what they're offering so FISU meditation over here so we can see their site looks pretty nice, pretty well done. I think this might be a kind of franchise type of brand. So not really the type of business that we'd be looking to target. Let's go and have a look if there's any other ones. How about Livebright? Let's have a look at these lot. So let's go and open their site. And we can see this is probably more likely to be a small local business. So let's go and click on class timetable for them. So you can see actually if we just go back, I think they said they're offering send me a message to book online yoga so once again they're doing that method where people need to go and send an online message book online yoga so they're having to go through extra hassle and this actually puts customers off when people come on and they see this they think oh i can't be bothered to go back and forth with messages whereas if they have a site like this where they can just go and book on and pay straight away then it's a lot easier and it's a lot easier for the business owner to actually go and collect the money from the customers if they actually just pay through their site so once again this could be another potential client that we could create a booking system for set them up with zoom and all of those types of things so like i said you not only there are so many different services and businesses that you can target there are so many different small local areas that you can go and target as well just by changing this area here I found more different businesses that I could potentially contact so let's go and have a look at a few more so we've done fitness instructor next one over here was a doula coaching I don't know what doula coaching is but I think it's something to do with babies I found it on this site here doula and birth coaching services so I thought I'll just type it in and see if there is any any in the local area so firstly I found this one over here so if we just go home and let's just see which one was the first one which was this azita nelson so we just go and open this up and we can see like i said it's some sort of antenatal classes i think or birth coaching classes but she isn't offering any online actual classes she has an online course over here which is if we click on online courses we can see it's an online baby massage course so if i just go and click on buy on this let's see where it brings us 
So I believe it's probably just some video. So you can see down here as well, this site is created by Weebly. So once again, like I said, it doesn't mean you're gonna to have to go and learn how to use Weebly. You can actually just go and say, we're gonna redesign your site using something called WordPress. It's gonna look a lot better. And then once again, you would just redirect her domain name to her site ground hosting, install WordPress, and then redesign her site. So that's another potential client maybe although she is offering an online course so she probably has a better understanding of how she can put her classes online so she might already be doing that so let's go and have a look at another one the next one was this one over here birthing calmly i believe so let's go and have a look at that one let's go and look birthing calmly over here so we can see doula services baby massage upcoming classes so we can see she's not offering any classes until June. So the reason she may have done that, let's just have a look. COVID online tutoring is also available privately or with friends. If none of these options work for you, you can also accept the online program. So she is saying she offers online tutoring over here, but there's no way for people to actually go and book it. So, and once again, she's using a GoDaddy website builder. I'm sure GoDaddy probably has a booking system that you could go and just find out how to put that onto her site. But once again, you could go and redesign the site for her. This site doesn't look like it needs to be completely redesigned, but you could go and say, well, we'll set you up with Zoom and we can go and set you up with a booking system. So you could go and contact her and say, we'll create a booking site for you so people can just book your online tutoring as well. So there's another potential client. Then we also have this one over here, Doula Julia. Once again, no indication that she's offering online services for her doula company. And let's have a look here. No type of way to actually go and book on here. Once again, this is a Weebly site as well. So there are loads of potential clients here. Once again, that I could go and contact and say, we can create a booking site for you. We can create a membership site for you so that you could go and create your courses on Doula and your members just pay you every month to go and watch your classes. So loads of different services that you could offer these potential clients. Once again, over here, the birth doula. Let's see if we go to services. Let's see what she's offering. See if there's any. So she's got loads of different classes, birth doula package, postnatal doula package, overnight support. So let's firstly just, just have a look at this one, birth preparation classes. So let's just go and click on this. And if we scroll down, we can see one day workshop, half a day or an evening, a two hour session. So she's just got here, please email me for price list and availability. So once again, that's a potential client that we could go and set with the booking system. Instead of having her being emailed and having to email her customers back, we could create a booking system where people can just go and book her birth preparation class online and pay straight online. Once again, like I said, similar to this one over here. So this could be her doula class. We can pick it. The location would be Zoom online. Then they can pick her as a trainer and we can click on continue. And then they could pick their date of their doula class and the time as well. So. They put the date, they pick the time, and then they just click on continue. And then all they have to do is go and fill in their payment details. So you can go and show this once again and say, we can make your life a lot easier. We can help you get more clients and more people onto your birth preparation class just by having a simple booking system. And it's gonna be a good investment for you. So next up, I just put in math tutor in Hartford. So there's loads of different tutor people that you could go and have a look at contacting as potential clients as well. So I just found this first one over here, which was explore learning. Now this one looks pretty well done. They look like they're basically completely online already. So these type of people, once again, not probably the ideal client. So we just go and close this. Then the next one I found, so I clicked on, let's just have a look. I believe it was this Dr. Rogers Collins, Dr. Roger Collins, which is math tuition, tried to open his site and it just brought me over to this empty page. So he obviously it could be someone that I could go and contact so he's got his phone number there. I could go and ring him up and say, I've been having a look. When I go to click on your website for math tuition, nothing happens. How about we set you up with Zoom so you can do online sessions with your students. We set you up the booking air website so your students can go and book in one-to-one -one sessions with you. We can set you up the membership area so you can go and add in your lessons on different topics so that people can go and pay. And for him, that could be really lucrative. Loads of kids off, off of school at the moment. So he could go and get loads of math tuition clients and customers, especially if he's got a booking system, if he's using 
using Zoom. But right now, when we click on his website, nothing happens. So that's a perfect potential client. So if I just click on him, we can just go and take his number down and once again, add that to our spreadsheet. And we, for him, somebody like him, we could add him to booking system, membership area, and Zoom, because he could do with having all three of those services. So that's a really good client. Those ones are the ones that you probably would be pretty happy to find because they need all of your services. So the next one, this was the one I just clicked on. The next one was this Vax. So once again, they look pretty good, well designed, and I think they've got a booking system and everything. So probably not the ideal client. So we just go and close those. Over here, next up we had, if I just scroll down, I found this Hitchin Maths Tutor. So just clicked on his site. You can see this is a website that looks like it's out of the 1990s, really, you know not very well designed and pretty plain and if i go to prices over here we can see 25 pounds an hour then there's also no indication that he's offering online tutoring once again we could just completely redesign his whole site and just say we're going to offer you a booking system we can set you up the zoom so you can do one-to-one -one sessions with your students and all of those types of things so once again another really good client here that we could definitely go and sell our services to so next up was the Nebworth Maths Tutor. So let's just have a look. I think he was a few more down. So I've gone really far down on this one. So let's see where the Nebworth Math Tutor is. I think maybe, oh, it was this one here, Michael Steele Math Tutor. So I clicked on his site and we can see over here, Michael Steele Math Tutor. Once again, pretty plain site that's designed with WordPress. So we could easily go and redesign his whole site, add in an online booking system, like I said, once again, set him up with Zoom maybe set him up with a membership area, loads of different things that we could offer because he is saying here, I encourage the use of online technology, but he's not really utilizing it himself very well. So he does want to offer online services, but he probably, like I said, we could go and offer some really good services to him and help him to get his business online in a better way. And then we had this one over here. So the next one I just typed in was guitar lessons in Hartford. And I just went for this guitar studio over here. So like I said, there's so many different businesses that you could contact to go and offer services. And once again, if you just go and change the area, you'll find even more businesses. So we'll just look at this one as a last example for the booking systems and the membership and the Zoom setup. So we can see here the guitar studio, if we just go home over here and on their homepage, there's no indication that they are offering online lessons for guitar. So if we just scroll down over here, we can see, let's see if they're offering online services anywhere. So it's saying they're open, but of course they would be closed at the moment. And then they've got their contact details, but nothing where it says that they offer online. So if we go to lessons over here, and then we can see that they've got a few different classes. So they've got guitar lessons, drum lessons, and piano lessons. Now, we could easily go and set them up with a booking system and set them up with Zoom so they can go and offer their guitar lessons online. So that way they can get their business running and start making some money again. And once again, they could easily be set up with a membership site where people can go and pay and have a look at all of the different guitar lessons. And like I said, the way that you can sell this to your clients and justify this to your clients, because why wouldn't they just go and pay? Because your client might just say, why wouldn't they just go and pay one of the big sites and become a member to that? And like I said in the beginning of the video, it's because people that are already their current customers they like to learn with the people they know they like familiarity so if they can actually go and pay to look at lessons from their current guitar tutor then they're probably more likely to pay for that than pay for a random website that's already offering online guitar lessons so that's how you can go and justify the reason for them to need it to your actual clients so that is basically how you can go and find clients and then what I would recommend is just going looking at all of the different areas and trying to come up I would say with one to two as many as you can but at least probably two to three hundred different businesses that you could potentially contact and that way you contact all of them you will eventually get some clients that are actually willing to pay you for their services so let's now go and have a look at how we can do this also with restaurants so in terms of finding clients that are restaurants this is going to be a lot easier task than finding other small businesses because all you have to do is type in restaurant and then your local area and it will come up with a list of restaurants that you could go and potentially target as clients to go and create a delivery app for them so if we have a look the first one mr tanaka's here because i know this one has closed down now so the first one i clicked on is mr tanaka's and when i clicked on their website it just came up 
with their Facebook page. So they don't even have their own website. So the chances of them having a delivery app is gonna be very slim. So they could potentially be a good client to say, we can offer you to create you an app where you can offer your customers takeaway and delivery. So we would have to just go and look. So let's just click not now. And let's just see if we can go and find some contact. So we've got a number for them. So we can go and always call them up when they are open and just tell them about our services and see if they are interested. So the next one I had a look at was, let's scroll down, I think it was this old CM, let's have a look. Yes, old CM Hartford. So you can see they do have a takeaway menu over here. So let's just go and click on this and it just brings you to a PDF document. So they might be offering takeaway, well, they were definitely offering takeaway, but right now people are having to just call up and do it that way. So they might be once again interested in having their own delivery app because it's gonna make their life easier and they might be delivering through Uber Eats or something like that. So like I said earlier on in the tutorial, we can go and say to them that you're gonna be missing out on a lot of cash because you're giving a lot of fees to Uber, to Deliveroo, to Just Eat and things like that. Whereas if you had your own dedica dedicated takeaway app, you could be making a lot more profit. So this once again would potentially be a good client. So what you're gonna do is once again, you just have your spreadsheet and start putting in your delivery app people as well. So let's go and have a look. The next one I've clicked on is Turkish Kitchen over here. So we just clicked on them. Now their website looks pretty nice and they do have a reservation part over here. So if we click on this, let's see, it does allow people to actually reserve a table and they've got different branches and things like that. So this is the type of client that actually would be really good to go and contact because they seem like they wanna keep their brand really professional. They've got more than one restaurant in different areas. So they might be thinking about offering takeaway. We could go and say, have you ever thought about offering takeaway? We can set you up with an app which would make it a lot easier for you to offer takeaways as well. And that way you can make more profit. So once again, could be another potential client. And then the last one I just clicked on, I was just scrolling through and I just clicked on this Deals Indian. And we can see if we go over here, they actually have their own thing where you can go and order online on their website. So they're allowing that on their website. So we could potentially say to them, you're doing it on your website, but it's actually easier and it's a better customer service for your own customers. It's a better experience for them to be able to order it through a mobile app. So maybe you could think about having a mobile app. So that could be another potential client. And you can also see here that when we click on Deals Indian, they are offering takeaway through Food Hub and also through Deliveroo. So we could say you could just cut these two out and have your own delivery app and start keeping 100% of the profits. So like I said, all you're gonna do is that. And then once you've gone through all of the restaurants in your area, you can just go and type in another area. So another area near me is called where. So once again, a bunch of different restaurants now, and I could just go and scope these out and see if any of them seem like potential clients that I could go and contact and offer the delivery app services to. So this could be a really lucrative service that you can offer because there's so many restaurants and hardly any of them have their own dedicated delivery app. So like I said, this could be a really great way to go and start getting your first clients whilst you're also contacting those small businesses. So now that I've shown you how you can go and find potential clients, like I said, you're going to want to go and think up two to 300 if you can, because you're going to want to contact quite a lot of them and eventually we'll start to get maybe five, 10 clients. And if they're all paying you upwards of 500, $400, that way you're gonna make a fair amount of cash and you can start getting some clients through the door and then you never know, they might refer people to other people that have businesses as well. So now that we've gone through that, having a look at how we can go and find clients through Google. Next, let's go and have a look at how we can actually contact the clients through email and also through phone. The first thing that we are going to be using to go and start contacting clients is going to be MailChimp. And MailChimp is a piece of software that allows you to send out a large amount of emails and you can design emails based off of their templates. So we will be going and creating some email templates around booking systems and restaurant delivery apps. And then we can go and send those templates out to the client's emails that we found in the last part of the tutorial. So you're gonna go over to MailChimp.com over here and you're gonna go and click on sign up for free. Once you click on this, you are just going to go and put in your email, choose a username and put in your password. So once you have entered that in, just scroll down and click on get started. You will then be brought to this screen that says check your email. So then head over to your emails over here and you should see an email from MailChimp. So we're gonna go and click on this email over here. And then over here, we are just going to go and scroll down and click on 
activate account so just go and click on this once you click on that it will say confirm you're a human so just click on i'm not a robot once you click on that you will be brought over to this screen that will ask you to pick a plan so we're just going to start with the free plan it allows you to have 2,000 contacts and send out 10,000 emails so that's more than enough to get started with your digital agency so just go and click on complete it will then say welcome to MailChimp and ask you to enter in your first name and last name. So once you enter that in, just click on continue. It will then ask you to enter the name of your business. So just go and put in the name of your digital agency in here. And then it will ask you for your website. So you can just say, just put in your URL in here to your website. So once you've done that, just click on continue once again. It will then ask you to add your address. So just go and put in your home address. And once you have entered this in, once again, just click on continue. It will then ask you if you have any contacts. Just go and click on no for now and click on continue. It will then ask you to find your marketing path. Now, don't worry about this because I'm going to go through the setup with you and show you how you can create the email templates. So let's just go and click on not right now. It will then just ask you if you want to subscribe to any of these things. I wouldn't worry too much about this for now. So let's just go and click on let's go. So once you click on that, you will be brought over to your MailChimp dashboard. And from here, you should see a page that looks like this. Now, don't worry too much about this, creating your first email, adding your contacts or anything like that. We are going to go and create our email template from scratch. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and click on campaigns over here. Once you click on campaigns, you will see create campaign over here. So let's go and click on create campaign. You will then see this screen over here. So we're going to go and click on email campaign. So let's go and click on this. And then we're going to name our campaign. So we're going to go and do two different campaigns. So we're going to do one for the booking sites, membership sites, and Zoom setup, and then one for the restaurant delivery apps. So we can just go and call this one booking and memberships. So let's just go and call it that. And then we can go and click on begin. Now, when you click on that, you will go and be brought over to this page over here. So you can firstly see add recipients. So we're going to go and add these later on. So these are going to be the potential clients that we actually send this email to. Then we've got from. So that's going to be us. So we can go and add that in later on as well. And we also can go and add in the subject. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually go and design the email. So go and click on design email. Once you click on this, it will say select a template. So we're just going to go and select this first one over here, sell products. Now, I know we're not selling products, but don't worry, we are going to go and design the template how we want it to be. So let's just go and select this. So once you select your template, you will be brought over to this page, which is the email builder. So from here, we can actually start going and building our email. And it's fairly simple to go and do this. So firstly, let's just go and add in our logo and let's add in a background image over here. And then we're gonna go and add some text. So for the background image, you can actually go and get this from the site. So if we go back to our site, go back to your WordPress dashboard, click on media over here, and then under media, we are going to go and choose this one over here. So just go and choose this image over here so you'll see it. So we're just going to go and choose this. Then we can go and copy the link over here. So just go and copy the link, open the link up in a new tab, and then we can just right click this and click on save image. So just go and save this image. So I'm just going to go and save this image as email header. So let's just go and save that. And then We'll just close this we can go back over here and then if we hover over here where it says image let's go and click on this and now we can click on upload and then from here i can go and choose this email header so let's go and choose this and click on open so now that that has uploaded i can go and choose this and then just click on insert so now we can see that that has been added over there so now we've got the logo over here so we can go and add our logo if we want to so let's just go and click on edit block and then over here, you will have your image. We can go and click on replace. And once again, we can go and upload. And I've just got my logo over here. So let's just go and upload this and just see how it looks. This one is completely transparent. So I don't know if it's going to look great, but we will try it anyway. Let's just go and have a look. So that doesn't look amazing. I don't know if there's a white version of this. Let me just go and have a look over here. Just because I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Let's see. There isn't a white version of this. So for now, I'm just going to leave my logo. So I'm just going to go and actually just delete that. So let's go and close this. And I'm just going to go and delete the logo. So we're just going to delete that. So next up we have is our text over here. So we're going to go and change what this says over here. So let's go and click on this. And now we want to go and actually edit this heading over here. Now, in order to do this, let's just click on save and close for a second. And then from blocks, go and click on styles. And then if we go to page, we can go and see we've got heading one over here. So let's just go and change this to white. So 
you want to go and change that to white over there we can also go and change the font so let's go and change something that's similar to the font on our actual site so let's go and have a look if any of these look particularly nice so let's try let's try lato let's see what that looks like lato looks kind of similar i guess let's just go and have a look at our site so we're going to go and try and find a font that looks the most similar just so we can keep the branding fairly consistent so let's go and have a look so we've got this one over here which looks not too similar let's try a different one let's see what else we have so let's see tahoma maybe or we could try vedana so let's just try a few of these until we find one that looks kind of close to this one over here so let's try let's see what else we have korea new Arial. how about lucida so let's try this so i'm just going to go and try all of them out so let's see what else we have lato merryweather merryweather sands and then roboto so let's see i think i'm going to go for the merryweather sands so let's just go for this that looks fairly similar like i said it doesn't have to be exactly perfect i'm sure no one is going to notice massively so now that we've gone and done that let's just go and change heading twos as well so let's go and change heading twos to this as well and it was merryweather so let's go and choose that so now that we've done that we can go and click on this block again and now we can go and change this so we are going to go and firstly make this into the center like this and what we're going to say is has your business been hit by coronavirus we are here to help so let's go and make that a little bit smaller so let's go and change that to a heading two so let's go heading two and then once again let's just click on save and close go back to page and let's just see our heading two is not white still so there we go that looks a lot better so now we've gone and changed that we can go and click on this again we might want to even make it a little bit smaller so let's just go and make this a little bit smaller so let's just go and make this let's see 30 pixels there we go that looks a bit better so because we are going to go and type a little bit more in there so let's go and click on this again has your business been hit by coronavirus we're here to help so then we can just say we are digital experts that can help get your business make sure you spell it right as well business online and up and running again and up we're going to go for this and up and running again so we're just going to put that in the center as well like this and let's just go and see if we can break it up a little bit there we go that looks a lot nicer now let's just see if we can change the style of this as well to white there we go so that looks a lot nicer and then let's just go one down two down three down so let's go and do that and let's just see if we can change the size from here so let's go and change it to 20 let's try 24 22 so that's perfect and then let's just see if we've got the font we want to use Merriweather Sands again so there we go so this initial one we are just going to send out to like I said bookings and membership potential clients so as soon as I open it it's going to say has your business been hit by coronavirus we are here to help then we've got we are digital experts that can help get your business online and up and running again so we're basically just saying to them we can offer services to get your business online and get it running again and help them make profit so we're kind of going with an attention grabbing heading over here so as soon as the potential client opens the email it might give them something to think about oh okay actually actually yes my business has been hit by coronavirus i wonder how this digital agency can help me so what we're going to do next is we are going to go and add in some buttons so let's click on save and close and then we're going to go to blocks and we've got button over here so let's go and add a button in there now with this button what we are going to do is we are going to say 
book your free consultation call so we want them to book a free consultation call with us and then that way once they're booked on we're going to go and ring them up and we can go and discuss our services with them and this is a little bit better than just strictly cold calling them straight i know earlier we were collecting numbers and we could have just called them straight but if they have actually booked a consultation call with us that means they've kind of registered their interest in our services and it kind of cuts out a lot of time wasted trying to ring people up who are just going to slam the phone on us whereas if they see this we kind of capture their interest a little bit then they book a consultation call with us and then that way when we ring them up we have more justified reasons to actually go and offer our services to them so then we're going to put a link to our web address so what we're going to do is let's go over here and then we're just going to click on request quotes and once we click on that we're just going to go and get the url that goes to our consultation call part over here so we're just going to go and paste that into the web address like this now we are also going to go and make sure that the branding colors are spot on as well so i'm just going to go and get the branding colors for this site as well so i will leave the hex codes to the branding colors in the description below so i'm just going to go over here and then if we go to style we can go and change this to this color over here and you can see that's the same purple as the one over here so that's the one we're going to be using and then we can go for rounded corners just to make sure that it looks the same as our site like this as well so now we've got that and then we can go and change the font so let's go and find the font we can once again change this to Merriweather Sands so now we've got book your free consultation call so now, like I said, that if they go and book in their free consultation call, they have definitely registered interest with us. Now, if people don't book, you still can go and ring them up and offer your services to them. But like I said, this is a good way to pique your client's interest. So now that we've done that, next up, we are going to go and create some more areas down here, just explaining a few of their services. So when they actually go and look through the email, they can go and have a, just a rough overview of the booking websites that we create, the membership sites that we create. And once again, we're going to be trying to prompt them to go and book that free consultation call so let's just go now and add in some extra areas in here so let's go and add a photo in here so we're going to go back to the media area within our website so just go back to your wordpress dashboard over here and then from here we will just go to media and go to the library again and then from here we can go and grab one of these images so what we're going to go and grab is going to be this one over here this one looks pretty cool so let's just go and copy the link to this once again, we can go and paste it here. So let me just try that again. Let's copy the link and we're going to paste it. For some reason, it's not letting me copy it. Okay, I'll just copy it manually. So let's just go and grab that and we can paste it in here. And then we're just going to go and save this image. So we're just going to right click, save image. And then I'm just going to go and click on save. So now that I have saved that image, let's go and upload it over here. So we're going to go and click on this and then we're going to go and click on replace and then we're just going to go to upload and then we are going to go for that booking site over here so just click on open and once it has uploaded we can just go and click on this let's close this and click on insert so now we have got that over here so that's looking pretty cool so let's just go and see when we go to preview let's just go and click on enter preview mode one we just want to go and see what it looks like so far so we've got it like that that looks pretty cool and if we go to a mobile we just want to make sure that it looks good on mobile as well okay that's perfect so it's looking cool on a mobile so that is perfect so it's looking good on a mobile so let's just go and close this now i just wanted to make sure that this image was okay for mobile so that's perfectly fine so what we're going to do next we're going to go and change this text over here so let's just go and click on this so it says feature the start the feature the start of your collection first so what we're going to do is we're going to go and put in beautiful booking websites so we've gone and put that in there and once again i'm just going to go and center that up because i think it looks nicer like that and now we're going to go to the booking site area on our website so let's just go to the front end and then we'll go to services and we'll go to web development 
And then from here, we are just going to go and copy some of this text, not all of it, we're just going to copy the main points out of here. So we're going to say one of the biggest on uh, one of the biggest advantages to online booking flat models is that it's always open business, you can accept bookings 24 seven, so your customers don't have to wait until the next reservation, the until the next day to make a reservation. So let's just go and copy this. Firstly, trying to read that too fast there. And um, we're just going to go and paste that in there. So let's try that again. Right click and copy. And let's just paste that in there now. And we're going to center this up. And then we can just delete this. And then we can also go and put in we create beautiful booking websites that will allow your customers to book appointments, lessons, meetings, consultations, and more. So let's just go and paste that in there and then finally we'll just say the perfect way to get your business online ASAP so we can go and put that in there let's just make sure that's a full stop so now we've got that and once again we're gonna go for book your free consultation call so what we can do is we can just go and duplicate this button so I think if we just hit this plus button over here now we can grab this and let's drop it there and then if we scroll we can grab it again and we can drop it there and then we can just delete this button and that just saves us the hassle of having to go and create the whole button over again from scratch so now we've got book your free consultation call again let's just go and see if we can I think it looks all right the size that it is so let's just leave it at that size okay so that's perfect so now we've done our booking website bit, beautiful booking websites, and we've got a little bit of information in there. And once again, we're prompting them. Next up, we can go and add in some different bits down the bottom here as well. So let's just go and change this. So when we go and click on this, we will see column one and column two. So let's firstly go and do column one. So column one, we are going to go and do membership sites. So for the membership sites, let's just go and click on here and we'll go back to our WordPress dashboard. And then from here, we can go to media again. Let's go to library. And then from the library, we can go and pick a membership site one. So let's go for this image over here. Let's see how that one's looking. There's a little bit over here that I don't like too much. So let's get rid of that. Let's go and have a look at this one. Is this one okay? Yes, this one should be fine. So let's just go and copy the link again. We'll go over here. And we're just going to paste that link and then let's see if we can save the image and click save so don't worry too much about you can see there's some strange little bits over here or from the cropping so don't worry too much about that because I think when we upload it it should be okay because there's a white background so let's just go and click on replace and we're gonna go and click on upload and then we're gonna go and choose this image over here and click on upload and let's just close this we can choose this click on insert yeah and you can see you can't notice so that looks perfectly fine so now we can go and let's scroll down where it says related products we can say let's just go here and we're just going to put in membership websites so let's go and change the style so let's go and change let's see if we can change the font style we can change it in here so let's go to font and we're going to go and choose the Meriwether Sands again so let's see we've chosen that let's see if it's going to let us do it in here so we'll scroll down Meriwether Sands there we go perfect and then over here instead of having next use this spot blah 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 we're going to go and mention something about our membership sites so let's go back to our membership site area so now let's go to services and web development again and then from here we can go and copy some of the information about membership sites so we can go and say let's see what we could go and take from here running a membership site allows you to generate recurring revenue members pay a monthly or yearly fee in exchange for access so we can go and copy this and let's just go up to here let's just go and copy that 
and paste that in there. So running a membership site allows you to generate recurring revenue. Members pay a monthly or yearly fee in exchange, which means that you can constantly build up your revenue every time you get more signups. Um, we can create a beautiful membership site for you to share your content with your customers and that's that and then after here we've got view similar products so if we go and click on this instead of having view similar products we're just going to go and say book your free consultation actually not get rid of that book your free consultation cool so then we're going to go and put a link over here so let's just grab this again we're going to click on link over here and we are going to go and choose our booking page so let's go and click on request quote again request quote again copy this go back over here and we're just going to paste that in there and click on insert so now they've got book your free consultation call just like that so that's perfectly fine and then we can also go let's go and change let's go to style over here let's go and change this so we can change it to black maybe so let's go back to content let's see if we can change the color i think we may have to change it within styles in here so let's go to page again and let's go and have a look if it's in here if we go and change the color we've got heading three and heading four so it may be this one let's go and change it to black yeah there we go that looks a lot better and let's get rid of italics i don't like that so that's perfectly fine let's go and click on save and now we can go and edit this bit over here as well so we can go and add in apps as well but i think what i'm going to go and do is i'm going to go and add in the zoom setup as well so let's go and add in the zoom setup over here so we're going to go to column two and i'm going to go to replace and now we're going to go and get the zoom logo so let's go back to our wordpress dashboard and then from here we can go to media let's go to the media library again and then from here let's go and see if we can find should be this one the zoom logo so we're just going to copy this and we'll paste that over here and then right click save image and then we've got zoom blue just save that and let's just close this we can close this as well let's go back over here and we're going to upload the zoom logo so let's just go and choose zoom blue and once it uploads we can just close this choose the zoom logo and click on insert and now we've got that there as well so that's looking pretty cool so now what we're going to do is let's just see if we can actually go and add anything around that so let's just go and see if we can add a border around that so let's see border let's go and see if we can that's for all of it so let's just go and see let's try line height let's just leave this for now that's okay so it would be better to go and make this image a bit bigger but that's perfectly fine so what we'll do is we'll just go back to content as well again and let's just see if we can bring this down to here so that looks a lot better and now we can go and change the style so let's go to fonts we're going to change that to Meriwether Sands again. And now we're just going to change this to Zoom Setup. So we've gone and done that. And once again, we'll go back over here, close this, go to our home page. And then from here, we can go to Services and we can go to Zoom Setup. And then we can just go and copy something from here. So Zoom allows you to conduct one to one and group video chats online for free if you're running a class, consulting business, blah, blah, blah. So let's go and just copy that there. And then we can just go and paste that over here so that's perfect and then what we will do is once again if we just go back to column one we can just go and copy this so let's just copy that go back to column two and instead of having shot the sale we can just go and paste in book your free consultation call now let's just go and have a look at the link and make sure that it's yep consultation call so we can just close that and that's it we can see we've got that all set up so that's looking good so we've got zoom and we've got our membership sites as well now if you want to you can also go and add in one 
about booking apps as well. So we could just go and duplicate some of these sections over here. Or we can just go and add them in as we want to. So let's just go and duplicate these. So let's go and duplicate this. And then we can go and move this all the way down to the bottom. So let's drop it there. Scroll down and scroll up a bit. Keep going. Let's drop it down there now. And now we've got that. So we can go and change this. So let's just make sure we've copied everything first. So let's go and duplicate this section as well. And we can drop that down there. And then we can drop it here. And finally, we want our book your free consultation call. So let's just go and duplicate that and drop it down there. And then we can drop it here. And finally, we can drop it down there. So now we've got that and we're going to want to change the image. So let's go back over here. Go back to the media area. So let's just go and click on the media library. And now we can go and get an image of the booking app over here. So let's go and click on this. We'll copy this and just paste it in here. Right click, save image. And we'll save the image. And then from here we can, let's just close this, go and change this image. So we'll go and click on this, replace, and then upload. And then let's just go and choose the app. And then from here we can just go and close this and insert the booking app. Now this one is a very large image, so let's go and make this a little bit smaller. Let's just go and make it something like that and then we can also go and just change this so we can say booking apps and then let's go over to our home page again and then from here we'll go to services and we'll go to mobile app development and then we can go down to over here so let's just go and copy this and we can close this and then we can just go and paste this in here. So booking systems help you do more with less. Once you have your business set up on the platform, you won't have to call your customers for reminders, send out follow up emails or manually update your diary. So we can go and add that in there. Now also down here we have the social links. If you want to go and set up social pages for your digital agency, you can go and do that and then you can go and link them. So over here, if we click on this, you can see you can go and add in a Facebook page URL, Twitter, any of those things, Instagram. I haven't gone and set up any social pages with the digital agency template. So you're gonna to have to do that for your own digital agency. So for now, I'm just gonna go and delete this and get rid of it. Then also down here, we just have this as well. So we can go and where we've got copyright current year and then we've got list company so that's going to be the name that we signed up for and then over here we also have our mailing address is and that's going to be our mailing address that we enter in and then this is just if they want to unsubscribe to us basically so i would just recommend leaving that in because that's good to have that in there so now you can see our email has come together it's looking pretty good now let's just go and see if we can go let's just click save and just go to blocks over here and we are just going to go and add in some dividers so let's just go if we scroll down let's just go and add a divider in there so that's one just breaks it up a little bit and let's just change the padding to 25 at the top and 25 at the bottom just like i said it breaks it up a little bit and then we can go and add another one divider over here with 25 at the top and 25 at the bottom so now we can see if we click save and close it just breaks it up like I said just makes the email look a little bit cleaner with those dividers in there so that's looking really good now like I said we've got our main headline over here has your business been hit by coronavirus we are here to help we are digital experts that can help get your business online and up and running again and then we are prompting them to book a free consultation tool if they're not 100% sure they can scroll down and see the offices offers the sorry the services that we offer 
and they can go and have a look at the different things that we're offering them. And once again, we are always prompting them to book a free consultation call. And then once they get onto the consultation call, then we can go and call them up and tell them about what services we think would be best fitting for them. So now let's just go and preview the template. So let's just go enter preview mode one. And now let's just go and click on desktop just to make sure. So on desktop, everything's looking fine, but more likely they're gonna be looking at on their mobile. So let's go and have a look what it looks like on a mobile as well. So that's looking good. Membership, looking good. Zoom is looking good. And booking apps, looking good. So that's perfect. So now we can just go and close this. And let's go and click on continue. So now that we have actually created the email template that we can go and send out to our potential clients, let's go and have a look at how we can go and finish off the rest of the campaign that we can send out to the potential clients that we found earlier in the tutorial. So once you have created your email template, you can go and then add the recipients. So these are gonna be the potential clients that we actually send this email to. So let's go and click on add recipients. And then from here, we can go and click on import contacts. And then from here, we can go and copy a, copy and paste from file. So click, go and click on this and then go and click on continue. And then from here, we can go and copy and paste the email address. So if we go over, to this over here, you can see I've just gone and put some example emails in. But like I said, that spreadsheet we were creating earlier when we were going and looking for potential clients, we're gonna have all of their emails in here. We can just go and copy them like this. And then we can just go over to here and we can just go and paste them in. So once you have done that, you can go and click on I understand and then go click continue to match. Once you click on this, it will bring you over to this page. So you can go and add a tag. So you could go and add a prospect tag to all of these. So you can go and add that if you want to. Personally, it doesn't really matter because they're all gonna be prospects. And then once they actually become clients, then you'll be contacting them on a regular basis. So it won't really matter too much about going and categorizing them. So then we can just go and click on continue to review. And then it will say you're all set to import. Now my one over here is just saying we only have one column. So I've only got the email column. I haven't put the first name, the last name and all those types of things, but that's perfectly fine. And then we can just go and click on import. So now that we've done that, we can see that we are gonna send this email to five recipients. That's only because I just went and copy and pasted five emails in, but that's perfectly fine because you're obviously gonna to want to go and copy and paste all of those emails that you've collected when you were going and looking for clients as I showed you earlier on in the tutorial. Next up, we have the from. So let's go and click on add from. And from here, it's gonna say the name. So what we're gonna put in the name, we're actually just gonna put the name of our agency. So just go and put in digital agency in here. And then you've got the from email address. Now I personally recommend going and putting in your professional email address in there, the one we created earlier. So contact at digitalagency.com. So we can go and put that in there and just go and click on save. Now, once you click on this, it will say that you need to verify your domain. So if I go and just put in my domain in there and click on save, and now if I go and click on verify domain, now once you click on this, it will say that you need to verify your domain. So if I go and just put in my domain in there and click on save, and now if I go and click on verify domain, and then we are going to go and just go and put in the email address that we created. So let's go and click on send verification email. And then it's gonna ask us to put in the verification code. So let's go over to our SiteGround site tools. And then from here, we can go to the email account we created. So let's go and click on the three dots and click on login to webmail. And when we click on login to webmail, it will bring us over to our inbox and we can go and click on the email from MailChimp over here. And then we can go and copy the code. And then we will go back over to MailChimp and then we can enter that code in there and hit verify. So then we'll say domain successfully verified and we can go and click on done. So now that we have done that, let's go and click on save again. And then finally, we're gonna add the subject. So let's go and click on add subject. So the subject is going to be over here. We're going to go and add in. Get your business online. And then we can just go and put in Corona virus alternatives so that's going to make the business owners want to actually look at the email because they're going to think oh my god coronavirus is here i need to get my business online and then when they open up the email they can go and read through and like i said hopefully book a consultation call and then preview text will just make it the same so just put that and just go and click on save so now that we have done all of that the last thing that you have to do 
is go and click on send and this will go and send that email out to all of those potential clients and then you just have to wait to see how many of them actually go and book in the free consultation call with you so next one i'm going to show you is how you can go and see who has actually booked a consultation call with you so let me just show you how the booking system works for when your clients go and actually or your potential clients go and book a free consultation call with you so i've just gone and opened up the site in microsoft edge over here just so i can go and book it in and then we can look at the back end of the wordpress dashboard to see how everything comes through so i've just gone and filled everything in so you can go and see i've put in the first name last name the company name of the client so this is when they're booking their free consultation call then i've gone and they have entered in their address of their business their phone number their email and then they can also go and put in some additional notes so i've just put in here i'm interested in the booking website service now many of your clients they probably won't put that in so but i just wanted to show you what it looks like on the back end so once they do that all they then have to do is click on place order and then once they click on place order you will see thank you your order has been received and then we'll be in contact to discuss your project shortly so that's what your potential client will see when they book their free consultation call so now if we just go back over here and we go back to the back end of our site so let's go and click on our wordpress dashboard and then from here we can go to woocommerce and we can go to orders and now we can see that Tony Montana order is over here. So we've got that, so we can go and click on that now. And now we can go and see all of the information that they just put in. So you can see we've got Tony's yoga over here, so we've got the business. Now this is really good because if you've forgotten which clients that you were looking to potentially work with, when they've put their business name in here, you can just go and look on your spreadsheet and then you can go and have a quick look over what it was that you were thinking to offer them and then before you actually go and call them up and offer them a service. Then they've got the email address over here as well and then the phone number. This is obviously gonna be really important because you're gonna want to call them up and give them that free consultation call. And then you've got the notes over here, I'm interested in the booking site. So you can see that comes through as well so like i said when you get this through you're going to want to go and have a look at their site again and think about the services that you can offer them before you actually go and call them because you want to have a rough idea of what you're going to say to them what type of services you're going to try to sell to them and those types of things so like i just wanted to show you how it comes through and then all you have to do is get their phone number and you're going to call them up now i will just go through very briefly with you what you can actually say when you call up your potential clients as well so before you call your clients up for their consultation call, obviously you, you've got their number ready. You first need to go and have a look at their business and just do an audit of the type of services that you can offer them. So you would have done this anyway when you're doing research, but you're going to want to refresh your me memory before you actually go and contact them. And then once you've, so for example, if we have a look at the yoga company from earlier, I think it was a Sunil yoga company, then I had a look and I thought to myself, well, I could offer him a better booking service. I could redesign his site so that it's a lot more seamless and he can take online payments. I can also pay, perhaps upsell him and offer him a membership site so that he can record his lessons and get his students to pay a membership fee to watch some of his yoga lessons back. And I could also set him up with Zoom, even though he probably has been set up with that, but I could mention that to him as well. So then I've written this all down prior to actually calling this potential client. So I've got all of the kind of rough ideas of the services that I want to try and sell to him. And then when you call them up, you just say, oh, hi there, is that Sunil from Sunil Yoga? This is Elliot from Digital Agency. I noticed that you booked a consultation call with me about getting your business online. I've been having a look at your website and I was thinking that we could offer you a few services that are going to actually increase customer sales so to get more people booked into your yoga classes and generally it's just going to make your life easier as a business so you're going to go and just talk to them normally and like i said once you've done your prior research it will be easier obviously have a practice and the more calls you do you will get more comfortable with talking to these clients so like i said you can just go and speak to them and then you can just go and offer those services so you can say so i've been looking at your site i think at the moment i can see that you're only offering booking through email so they have to email you and then you email them back to confirm well I think it would actually be a really good idea if you had a booking system on your site so people could book in for your live yoga sessions and then you can say to them if you want to just jump on a quick Skype call with me I can actually go and show you a demonstration of a booking site to show you how easy it is to go and use them and how easy it will be for your customers and then what you want to do is just try and get them onto a Skype call and then that way you can go and share your screen with them and you can show them exactly how the site works so just the one I showed you 
and you can go and show them all of the different features of the site and how easy it is to use. So then when you finally start seeing that they are showing some interest, they start asking you questions and those types of things, then you can actually try and sell them. You can say, so this is the service that we offer. We offer booking sites, they're $399, but I think overall for the investment, you're gonna keep this site for the entirety of your company. So it's gonna be a one-time investment and you just have to pay for the hosting every year to keep it running. So you don't have to pay any subscription or anything like that. And we can get you set up pretty much in a couple of weeks. So that way you can start using your new site straight away. And like I said, it's gonna help you to retain your customers that you already have, because it's gonna be a much easier and seamless booking system for them. So it's gonna be a lot better service for them when they actually are booking it in. And it's gonna be a lot better experience for them when they book classes. And then also for new customers coming in, they're gonna find it a better experience as well, which means that you'll be able to build up your customer base. And then just to conclude the call, you can say, we are gonna send you an invoice over. We work on a basis where you pay 50% upfront to actually start the project and then 50% upon completion of the project. So we will send you an invoice over if you could just make that payment and then we will get started right away and we can have your project completed in one to two weeks. That's kind of down to you. You need to practice and decide how long it takes you to actually make these sites and these apps. But if you think you can create a site within a week, then you can say to them, that we've got a one week turnaround and you can put that within your invoice. And then like I said, you can just say, we're gonna send an invoice over now. Once you make the payment, we will get started on your project right away. And then you pay the final 50% upon completion of the project. And we'll be in touch if there's anything else we need you to do. So now we've had a look very briefly at the types of things that you can say to your clients. Now let's go and have a look at how we can go and create an email template to send out to potential restaurant delivery app clients. Okay, so now let's go and have a look at how we can create an email campaign to send out to restaurant delivery prospects. So once again, we can go over to campaigns over here. And then from here, we are going to go and click on create campaign. Then we are going to go and choose email. And then we are going to go and call this restaurant delivery campaign. And then let's just go and click on begin. Now from here, we will scroll down and we can go to content once again and click on design email. From here, we can go and pick the sell products one again. So let's just go and choose this. And then from here, we can go and edit our template once again. So firstly, let's just go and delete the logo again, because I'm just gonna get rid of that. So we'll go and delete that. And now from here, we can go and add in an image. So I'm just gonna go and add that same image in again. So let's just go and choose that and click on insert. And then now we can go to, let's go to style over here. We'll go to page and we'll just go and change our fonts once again. So let's just go and change this. And we'll scroll down and pick Meriwether Sands again. And I'm just going to go and change all of them this time. So let's change that. We'll just go and do all of them just to save a little bit of time. So we'll change this one as well. And do that. And finally, we'll just leave that one. So let's just make sure that it is Mayweather Sands and turn off Italic. And now we can just go and click on Save. And that's all done for us. So now that we've done that, we can go and edit this. So let's just go and click on edit over here and we can just say the same as we've done before. Has your restaurant been hit by coronavirus? And then we are here to help. So we can just go and put that in and let's just center it up. And maybe let's just make it a little bit smaller. So font size, let's try 32. So we've done that. And now we can just say, we can help get your restaurant online. So you can start making profit again. Let us set you up with a dedicated delivery app so you can start doing business and get back on your feet. So we can just go and say something like that. Now I'm just gonna go and center this up again and I'm just gonna go and change the font size as well. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. Let's make it 22 like that. And let's just go like that. And let's just see if we can go and change the color. Just make it full white. There we go, perfect. So let's see, maybe just 
a little bit grayer like that so that looks good so let's just click on save and close so now that we've done that next up we can just go and add in an image of our booking delivery app over here so let's just go and add in an image so we we'll go back over to our site and we'll go back to our WordPress dashboard and then from here we can just go to media and click on the library and then from here we can just scroll down and we can go and choose one of these delivery app ones so let's just go and have a look so this one is 3000 by 2000 what size is this one 800 by 800 so let's just go for this one because it's a little bit smaller so I'm just gonna go and copy this and we can just go and paste this in here and now I'm just gonna go and right click save image and then I can just go and click on save so now let's go back over here we'll just close this and we're gonna go and add that image over here so let's just go and click on this click on replace and then we're gonna go and click on upload and then from here we can go and choose the restaurant and just wait for that to upload once it has uploaded we can just go and choose it click on insert and now we have our delivery app over here so that's looking good so let's just go and make it just a little bit smaller so that's just about the right size okay that's perfect and basically all we need to do is just that so we're gonna go and just delete this bit over here so let's just delete that and we can go and delete this as well and all we need to do is just change the button now and change the text in here so let's go back over to our site we'll close this and let's go to the home page and then from the home page we'll go to services and go to mobile app development and then from here we can go and just copy some of this over here so let's just go and copy this consumers want convenience in all aspects of their lives the takeaway market has grown significantly over the last decade so we can just go and copy that as a matter of fact we probably don't really need that bit we can just go and copy this over here so let's just go and copy that and then we can go and paste that in there and let's just center align all of it and then we can just go and put in a heading over here so let's go and choose a heading to your own beautiful delivery app so we can just go and add that in there and click on save and close so let's just go see if we can change this let's go to style and we'll change it to black it's not gonna let me change that bit to black so let's see if I can go and let's just click save and close we'll go back to page over here and we'll go to heading 2 and we'll just change that to black there we go and now we can just go let's make this a little bit smaller 25 there we go and let's just save and close again just make sure that the font is all correct maybe with the sans yep so now that we've done that we just need to go and change the button once again so let's just go and change the button we can just say book your free consultation cool and then we'll go to style we're gonna make the rounded corners and we're just gonna go and paste that color in here so let me just go and click on this and I'll just paste this in here and now we've got book your free consultation call and then finally we just need to go and get this link over here so let's just go and copy this and we are just going to go and go to content and paste that in there and click save and close and that is basically it that's a really easy template to go and create so now that we've done that and we've just seen here studies show restaurants that offer online ordering conduct between 6% and 20% of their business this way and see a 60% increase in sales and then we've just put in a little bit about why use third-party apps like Uber Deliveroo I'm not 100% sure if Deliveroo is in the US so you can always go and change that to an app that is more frequently used within your state or something like that so now we've done that we can go and click on continue and now the other parts are actually already set up for us so we've got the from already set up over here so you can go and edit that if you want to once again so you can go and change this and make it your professional email address like I showed you already so let's say contact at satinlodge.com and just click on save so because I've already set it up it lets me go and set that up and then we've got the subject over here we can just go and put the subject as as your restaurant been hit by coronavirus so we can just go and put that in there and then the preview text can be we can help your business get back on its 
complete and then let's just go and click on save so now we've done that now the last bit is to just go and change the two because we've already put in our recipients so we can go to edit recipients and then this time we can actually go and instead of picking all subscribers in audience we can just go and click on group or new segment and we can go and click on paste emails and then you can go and paste those client emails so any restaurants in the local area when you've actually done your research for who which clients you're going to contact you can just go and grab all of those emails and just paste them in there like that and then what you can do is click on exclude these emails from my segment so just click on that and then click on build segment now you can see here for me it's saying four recipients you pasted were not valid email addresses and that's just because I went and entered in some random email addresses. So once you've done that you can just go and click on save and you will over here have those recipients now. And then all you have to do then is click on send once again and then that will go out to your prospects and your potential clients and then hopefully they book a free consultation call then you can just go back over to your site, go back to the WordPress dashboard and then from here you can go to WooCommerce, go to orders and then over here you will be able to see all of the different people that have booked a free consultation call with you and then like I said when you actually click on it you can go and get their number over here and then you can just go and call them and discuss the option of setting up a restaurant delivery app with them. So now that we've had a look at how to actually contact the clients through email and by phone, the last bit of the tutorial is actually to have a look at how we can charge our customers to make sure that we get paid on time and in full. So for the final part of the tutorial, I am going to be showing you how you can actually bill your customers to ensure that they pay you on time and they do pay you for your full service. And in order to do this, we are going to be using a piece of software called PandaDocs. And this is going this is basically a billing software that allows us to go and send the clients an invoice and then they can pay like that. So let's just scroll down because we're not going to click on that ad. We'll just be kind and we'll scroll down and we'll click on PandaDoc over here. Once you click on this, you will come over to the PandaDocs homepage. Now, PandaDoc is actually a free piece of software, and of course, you can always upgrade. But if we just go over to the pricing, I will just show you what you get with the free version. So you can go and have unlimited signatures. So basically, it means that you're, you can send out unlimited documents to your clients and they can sign them. We also have unlimited document uploads. So we're going to go be, be creating our own invoices and uploading. And, and then we have payments and unlimited users. So you can see that they offer a pretty good service considering it's free then obviously as you get more clients you might want to think about upgrading they do have professional templates that you can use time tracking so you can go and track when your clients have signed things and stuff like that so you can go and do things like that but for now we're just going to go for the free account so just go and click on create free account and once you click on this you can just go and enter in your email address so like I said you probably want to think about just having everything from one email address so you might just want to use your professional email address that we created earlier so once you enter in your email address, just go and click on sign up. Once you click on sign up, it will just ask you to go and enter in some extra information. So I'm just going to go and enter this in now. So once you have entered in your name, your job title and in company name, you can just put the name of your agency. Then company size, I've just put solo because it's just going to be us running the digital agency. CRM, just put, I don't have a CRM, doesn't really matter too much about this. And then what brought you here, I've just picked proposals. And then you can just put your phone number in, pick a password and click on start using PandaDoc. You will then be brought over to this screen that just says hold tight your account will be ready in a few moments So just wait for this to load once it loads you will be brought to this screen that says drag and drop a file here So this is going to be the file that we can actually go and send out to our client So this is going to be our invoice now in terms of payments What you are going to do is when you discuss with your client You're going to say you pay half up front and then you pay the final half when we actually complete the project And that way at least you know you've got some money and you don't spend a lot of time working on their project and then they never pay you so if they pay you half, they're more likely to see it through and then end up paying you the whole thing. But then if for whatever reason they do end up just going cold on you, then at least they have paid you half for your time that you've spent on your client's project. So like I said, we're going to go and create an invoice for the first half of the payment of the project and then for the second half of the payment of the project. So to create invoices, so before we actually go and upload a file onto PandaDocs, we are actually going to go and create the invoice. So once again, head back over to Canva over here, the one that we used earlier, and in here we are going to go and type in invoice. So just go and type that in, 
let me just make sure I spell it correctly and just go and hit enter. Once you hit enter, you will be shown loads of different invoice templates that you can use. Now you can pretty much use any one you want. So just go and have a look through them and just pick one. But for now, I'm just gonna go and pick this one over here. I like the look of it, it looks pretty clean. So we're gonna go and just click on this. And now from here, we can actually go and edit this template to create our invoice. So once your template loads, let's just go and zoom in. So let's just go to 75%, make it a little bit bigger. So basically what we're gonna do in here now is you've got your client and now you can just go and like I said we're gonna create our first 50% that they pay you and the second 50% so what we can do is we can just go and make it look nice if we want to so I'll just go to uploads and you can go and upload one of those images from the site so if I just go to upload image over here and you can see I've uploaded this email header one so I've just gone we can just go and drag that onto there so you can see just keeping the branding and everything the same and then you can go and put your logo in here if you want to as well I'm just not gonna bother with that for now so I'm just gonna go and delete this. And then what we can do is we can say, let's say this is our new client. The first one is gonna be first invoice. So we can say first invoice. Now you might wanna keep a log of your invoice numbers. They don't really matter too much, but if you ever do want to look something up, then you can go and keep a log of your invoice number. So you can go and create a spreadsheet and you just have the client's name, their first invoice number, and then their second invoice number. So that way, if there is ever a issue with anything, then you can always go and look up their invoice number on your spreadsheet and just see if it's been paid. So you can go and create a spreadsheet. So I thought I'd just show you. So let me just go and show you. So you can go and create a spreadsheet like this. So we've got the client name. So let's say it was Kenya Limbo. We could say Kenya Limbo. And we could go and put their business in so something like limbo yoga let's say it was and let's just make that like this then you've got the invoice number so we can go put the invoice number in there three thousand and zero one zero three thousand and zero one zero one and then the amount so you could say let's say it was uh, 250 pounds let's just say for example then paid so you can say yes or no whether they've paid yes or no and then you can also say is it invoice one or is it invoice two so invoice one would mean that they still need to pay us the other 50 percent as well so you can just go and create a spreadsheet like this if you want to just to make sure everything is organized and you are keeping on top of which of your clients have paid and their invoice numbers and things like that so like I said you might want to just keep track so you could just start it you could go and create a system where you do your invoices so for example we've got 3000 here so we've got 101 and then when you create a new invoice you can just say that's 102 103 104 and just keep incrementing it by one so you could start off with this is your first invoice 3101 when you get your first client and then when you get your second client or if your second client's paying their second invoice you can go and just do that so you can just go and add your invoice numbers in like that then you've got who it's actually for so this is going to be your client's name and then you can just go and put their business address in here and then finally you've got the description over here so in the description we can say let's say they just want one booking website so booking website just one that's your first client and then you can just go and delete the rest so you can just go and do this just like that or let's say they want more we can just go and add zoom setup onto here so we can go and do that and then we can delete this so let's say they wanted two booking websites then you can go and change the quantity to two so for most of your clients it's going to be one but it's good just to have that on there just in case and then we've got the price so because this is the first invoice let's say our booking websites are $399 so if we just do $399 divided by two we can see first invoice is going to be $199.50 so we just go over here and we would say first invoice they're going to pay $199.50 and then let's say 149 for zoom setup 7450 so we can go and just put in here 7450 and then we can just delete this now in terms of rate you don't really need this column this is only if you're charging hourly so if you if you decide to charge hourly you can go and put this in here but you can always just go and let's just delete elements and we'll delete this top bit as well just like that and then we can just go and spread these out a little bit so we can go and do this there we go so now we've just got description quantity and price and then we just got the total so 199.50 
19950. I should probably know this, but anyway, plus 7450 is 274. So then the total to pay is $274. And then at the bottom here, we're going to want to add a signature just to make sure that they sign it so they can do an e signature. So we can just put and put client signature and we can also just go and put digital let's actually want to put these the other way around so you've got your signature at the top so client signature and then just delete this like that and then we can duplicate this and we're going to put agency signature here so then both parties have signed it. Let's just make sure they're lined up. There we go, and just make sure there's a bit of space so they actually have space to put their digital signature in. Let's just make sure it's all lined up. There we go, perfect. And then down at the bottom here, you can just put your address. So that's just gonna be your home address if you're running your digital agency from home. So now that we've done that, obviously you wanna go and change the branding colors. So you can go and change the branding colors. So like I said, I will leave the branding colors, the hex code of the branding colors down below in the description. So now we can see we've just changed that. So let's just go and change these to our brand colors. And that one, and this one. And then we can go and change, let's see if we can change that style there to this. So you can't really see that, so I'm just gonna change that to just the white make it easy so then we've got first invoice and then basically all we can do now is just go and download this so you want to go and change this over here so we could go and just call this Kenya Limbo first invoice okay so we've got her first invoice and then we just go and hit download and then we're gonna hit download once again so once it has downloaded we can just go and let's just close this and we can close this and I'm just going to go and close this spreadsheet because I don't need it now so I'm just going to go and close that and now we can go back over to PandaDocs and now we can go and click choose a local file so we've just gone and created our invoice for our client and now we want to go and upload it to PandaDocs so let's go and click on choose a local file and now I can go and pick that Kenya Limbo first invoice let's just go and hit on click open and once you click on that it will be uploaded here and now we can actually go and drag some things in here so we can go and drag signatures in so let's just go and drag a signature over here so we've got one signature and then you can go and assign the recipients so once we've done this we can just close this and now we can go back to content and we can go and drag another signature in here so now we've got our signature and the client signature. So now we can actually go and assign these. So if we go to agency signature, we can go and click assign. And we want to go and if we go to assign recipient, it will come up over here. And then we want to go and assign this. We can go and assign it to ourselves. So assign to me. And then we just got placeholder signature. We can go and change the text if you want to. And then you've got required. So we can go and see if we just scroll down, let's just click back on this. We can see we've made it required. And then after here, we've got the client signature. So we can just go and add in our clients. So let's just say, for example, the client was a different email. Let me go and put another email in here. Contact at satinlodge.com. So let's just go and click add. And then this is gonna be our client's name, Kenya Limbo. And then that's that so we just click on this so let's just put that in again Kenya limbo and then down here we should be able to just save it so let's just click on add person okay yeah so now we've got Kenya limbo so Kenya limbo needs to sign this and we need to sign this one over here so we can actually just go and click on accept and sign because we've just signed our own one like that so now we've done that all you have to then do is click on send document but before we actually click on send document we can actually just save this because what we want to do is we want to go and set up payments so if we go to dashboard over here and from our dashboard we can actually set up the payments so if we go to settings over here and now we've got payment gateways so let's go and click on payment gateways over here 
and from here you can actually go and set up payment gateways so you can go and set up stripe so if i click on stripe over here i can actually go and click on connect so all you would need to do so they've got an actual video here of how it works but we can go and click on connect over here and then when you click on connect it brings you over to Stripe over here. So it's gonna go and say, so what you need to do is you need to go and set up a Stripe account, which is really easy. All you have to do is if we just go over to stripe.com over here, and you just need to go and set up a Stripe account, which is really simple. All you have to do is just go fill in your details and you have to actually upload your ID. So either a passport, driving license, that type of thing. So Stripe can verify you. And then once you have your Stripe account set up, like I said, it's really easy to go and set one up. Then you can just go back into PandaDocs. So let's just go and close this. You can go back into PandaDocs and just click on connect. And then it's gonna go and try and connect your Stripe account over here. And once you do that, that's it it's really easy so you can see over here they're asking me to sign up but because I already have an account it's fine I can just go and connect it and click authorize access to this account so you're just gonna go and enter in your details once you actually set up your stripe account once you do that your clients can actually go and pay you directly like that you can also go and set up PayPal as well so we click on PayPal over here and once again you can go and click on connect and then you all you have to do is connect your PayPal account to PandaDocs. So just enter in your email address, select your region, and just go through the setup process. It's really easy to go and connect. So then once what we can do once we've done connecting PayPal and Stripe, we can go back to documents over here, and then we can go to our first invoice. So let's just go and click on this. And then once the document reopens, what you can actually do is you can go and drag card details onto here. And then, so right now it's saying enable a gateway to start collecting credit card details. So because I haven't actually enabled it, it won't let me do it, but you can just go and drag this onto here. And then when you send the document out to your client, they can actually just go and pay directly through PayPal or with Stripe. So they can go and pay the $274. So it's really easy to go and collect these payments from your clients. Then all you have to do is click on send document, send via email. And then you'll see over here, the document name, Kenya Limbo, first invoice, you could say, you could say booking website project. And then you can just click on save and continue. And then you've got over here who it's gonna send to, and you can just go and click on send document. Now you can see for me it's saying my document hasn't been sent because I haven't verified my email. So let's just go over here and let's just verify our email. So let's just go and refresh our inbox. It might be in our junk email. Let's go and have a look. And we can see we've got this one from PandaDocs over here. So we can just go and click on this and click verify your email address. And now that I've clicked on verify email address, it has brought me back over here. So now if I just click on fill and sign, we can see that it brings up the document and I've already put my signature in, so that's fine. So I can just go and click on finish. Now let's go and have a look at how it actually arrives to the customer as well. So let's just go over to professional email address that I created just to see how it sends through. So let me just go over here and go back to SiteGround. And then from SiteGround, we are gonna go to websites over here. And then we are gonna go to site tools again. And then let's just go to email, email accounts. And then if we scroll down, we click on those three dots again click on login to webmail and now I can see I've got that email over here from PandaDocs and it's if we just click on allow over here and then what it's going to say is Francis Jeffers so that's going to be us and once the client speaks to us they're going to know what our name is has sent you and then this is going to be the document over here that they need to sign so then they just go and click on open the document and when they open the document we can go and see that they can go and just sign it. So we can click on client signature. It will come up with their name, so they can just go and sign it like that, or they can go and draw it themselves like this. So if they've got a really complicated signature, they can go and click accept and sign, and then they can just go and click on finish. Now, like I said, once you actually set up the payment gateways, they will be able to go and actually pay within there as well. And then they can also go and download the PDF as well, so that they have a copy of the invoice as well. So now if we go back over to PandaDocs now, and we go into documents, and now we can see that the status of this one is completed because it has been signed. So you will go and see in there that it would say sent before, or it might say expired, and then you also have waiting for payment, 
paid as well so when you go and enter in those payment details like I said so when you set up stripe and PayPal you will actually have these as well so waiting for payment and paid as well so that way you can go and have a look if your client has actually paid you and then basically you can go and start their project and then once you finish their product all you're going to do is go for a second invoice so you can just go and change this to second and then it will be the same price because they're paying 50 percent and then you just go and send them over their second invoice and they just do their second payment and that's it once they're happy to sign off the project and there we go that's it's easier as that to go and ensure that your clients are paying you and you don't have to do it in an amateurish way where you're trying to send them bank details to transfer your money or trying to get them to pay you through, pay through paypal by sending them your paypal email address you're actually doing it in a professional way by sending them an invoice and then they have to sign it and they pay like that so that is the final part of the tutorial guys i hope you have enjoyed this full length tutorial on setting up your own digital agency from home there was a lot to cover and i tried to cram in as much as i could in this tutorial without making it too long but also covering everything so that you can actually get started so i hope you have enjoyed the tutorial if you have enjoyed it make sure to give it give it a big thumbs up and i wish you all the best of luck with with starting your very own digital agency make sure to share this with anyone that's interested in starting their own digital agency as well and i hope to all see you in the next video